Hello and welcome to Silverstone for the opening round of the 2004 British Superbike Championship. Now we know this is, without doubt, the best domestic bike championship in the world. And every year we tell you it's getting bigger and better. This season, believe the hype. There is unprecedented factory representation from each of the world's leading motorcycle manufacturers. In fact, between them, they make up half of the expected 30-strong field. It's going to be a very tough battle this year. To enhance your enjoyment of it all, you'll be joined by Charlie Cox and Steve Parrish throughout. Steve, a lot of changes this year. Yeah, Craig, one of the significant changes is that Dorna, who own the rights to the MotoGP series, have taken the commercial rights here at the British Superbike class. Now that really is going to make a launch pad. As in the past, we've seen riders, we've seen Troy Bayliss, we've seen Neil Hodgson and of course Shane Byrne to go to MotoGPs. But now that they're part of this series, really it's going to make the British teams look at that MotoGP class. And I think for some of the younger British riders, we could some, see some great switches from them going into MotoGPs. So Charlie, what's the knock-on effect as regards the teams here this year? Well, I think if you just look down the pit lane, you can see it looks like a world championship pit lane. It's always been a professional series, we know that. But with manufacturer back now, Honda weighing in with a full-blown works effort to try to win this championship. You've got world-class riders. Of course, we know our British riders already are world-class, but it's becoming that sort of a championship. It's really, really leading edge. OK, gents, good to have you back. Let's take a closer look at those teams. Teams mentioned by Charlie and Steve, they're well represented on the front row of the grid. Let's start with the rookie to the series, Ayuchi Kainara, on board his HM Plant Honda. One of his first times around the track here at Silverstone gets himself on the front row, which is very good indeed. Alongside him, the three likely contenders for this year's title. Of course, former champion John Reynolds on a bike he's got to know very well. Alongside him, Sean Emmett on the Monster Mob Ducati. Could this be Sean's year? He's performed very, very well. He just needs a stable season, and he's going to do very well if he can do that. And alongside him, we have Michael Rutter in pole position on board his new bike. Michael, just getting your helmet on there. But how are you feeling? Yeah, good. You know, um, just want to get this race over with. Uh, it's a bit of a lottery this race is going to be. It's the first time really being on Michelin tyres uh, for these wet conditions, so hopefully uh, everything will work well. OK, Michael, thanks very much. Well, there is a bit of rain coming down, and there's nothing quite like the atmosphere on the grid for the first race of the season. It's very exciting. So let's go to our commentary team of Charlie Cox and Steve Parrish. And you can see the trepidation in Michael Rutter's eyes. Very tricky conditions. They're mostly on wet tyres. OK, revs are up. Ready for a start. Great start there from Emmett, have a look at that, he's just flown across, not so good from Rutter, and have a look, right hand side of your screen, it's Kianari, Kianari's through, and how about that, third place is Kagiyama running with him, I think JR got bogged. As they tear off down towards Maggot's corner, and that was a faller I saw at the back, there, there was someone down, Kianari leads down into the Beckett's complex, and that is, that's Nick Med. Med is out of this race on the very first corner. Brand new bike as well, what a disaster. Now have a look at that, Emmett already is through. Kianari's lead did not last long as we go down through that island chicane. Bike number five, the Monster Mob Ducati. Emmett leads right behind him, Kianari. And as you can see, Kagiyama riding the ride of his life. Now here comes Rutter trying to fight back. Fight back down into Abbey Corner. This is looking like the... Oh, can't look. Oh, that was really tough. Very, very close there from Michael Rutter. He is known as the Rain Master. There's no doubt about it. You can just see how slippery that circuit is. It will dry out almost certainly as the race goes on. Emmett leads this race on Dunlop tyres. Behind him, the two Michelin shot Hondas. And as you said, Kagayama having a fantastic ride. Look, look at, at that. Rutter. Look at Rutter. Straight past his teammate. Now, Kagayama on the blue machine wants to find his way around Kianari, but can't quite do it as we go into the complex. Really tricky part of the circuit, plenty of trepidation on the pit wall. They're the Honda men, and why wouldn't they be as they watch Rutter muscling his way to the front? Michael Rutter has got the magnets on, and Sean Emmett is in his sight. Yeah, now again, look at that. You could see Sean Emmett, the rear tyre sliding away. The trouble is, when it does get dry, these two guys definitely on full wet tyres. Those rear tyres will start to melt. They'll get overheated, but at the moment, they'll be looking for damp patches when they're in a straight line to keep the tyres nice and cool. And you can see there's nothing like the lean angle as they go through this island bend there. This is the fastest part of the circuit they're coming up to now, reaching 150 miles an hour as they accelerate out of their third, fourth, fifth gear all the way down this straight. Down into Abbey 
corner. That was where Rutta was so strong before. Here are the two Suzuki boys sorting out the order. Kagiyama, he might be recovering, but he's not going to let the boss through just yet. John Reynolds slots in behind, but the body language of that bike says, I'm coming through. Amit there, number five on the V-twin machine, the 1,000cc V-twin Ducati, and Michael Rutter on the four-cylinder across the frame, Honda, and it will be very interesting to see how they get the pad out, but Rutter's up the inside. Oh, is he fearless, or is he what? The second muscle task by Rutter already. That's a slow motion version of Abby, but still tough stuff. Yeah, no doubt, out of that tricky corner there. Now, Emmett, as I said, on Dunlop tyres there. Rutter has a steady look over his shoulder there to see what's going on. He's looking for his teammate, and there he is, 23, the 21-year-old Kian this is the move down the inside very brave he just slots it down the inside and you can see there Emmett says oh you've got my line there was nothing he could do about it a very nice professional move there from Michael Rutter oh no we've got another rider down that's Steve Plater on the Yamaha Number five there, Sean Emmett is being caught the whole time, and that's Kianari really closing in. But there's the danger man. Number two, John Reynolds on the Rizla Suzuki coming in. Yeah, Reynolds got a terrible start, so he had all that work to do. He's got the pace, as we can see, and he's working his way up through the field, down through Abbey Corner, where it is so, so tight. The drag up the hill, but there's a drying line starting to appear already as we look at a major attack now looming straight through for Kianari on Emmett. OK, Reynolds looks as though he's about to strike. That's the blue machine moving down on the red machine of Emmett, and he is straight through. Can he gather it up, or has he carried too much speed? Tippy toes just breaks it. And there's Taddeo Carter, the multi-GP winner that's been brought in by Honda, this team here, who just start the final lap for Michael Rutter. He's been brought in as team coordinator. That just goes to show how much Honda are putting it this year. Look at Rutter there sliding the bike. Yeah, not a lot of expression from Taddy, but I tell you what, he must be laughing on the inside because have a look at this. Talk about a debut for a new factory effort and a debut for a new rider lineup. They're just storming this. Yeah, they are. Now you can see a real dry line there, but fortunately for number three here, Michael Rutter, he's able to cruise a little bit. He's done all the work. He's built up enough of an advantage to be able to cruise this last lap. Look at the concentration still in those eyes. He does not need to make a mistake. What a result this will be for the new Honda team and this brand new Honda Fireblade. And Michael has time for a casual look over his shoulder to see who's coming. And it's amazing to me who isn't coming, and that is Sean Emmett. You'd expect him to be buzzing around the back of him at the front end here. Almost certainly the Monster Mob team will be disappointed, but could be a tyre choice. Those tricky conditions at the start of the race is just about gambling. And there's so many different choices of compounds. Even though it's a wet tyre, you just might have thought they've gone for a slightly too soft a tyre. We'll wait and see what happens. But Rutter really has had a coffee book ride. Yep, well, as you say, Steve, terribly fluky conditions. And this man has absolutely capitalised it as he just strokes one more time around Luffield up to this incredibly tight chicane. The last little left-right before the start-finish line. And Michael Rutter, who had so much frustration in his championship last year, saw so many things not work for him, takes the win. Well done for Michael Rutter, and look at that, a win by a country mile. Fantastic job for him, and he will be amazed at who is second. It is his teammate. There is Neil Tutsworth, the boss of Honda Racing there, ecstatic. And I believe we've got one of the top guys over from Honda in Japan to witness this debut win of the CBR 1000. Well, considerably better conditions for this second race, and I think everyone will be happy with that. Now we'll see a real tyre battle. Let's see who can do it. Revs are up, they're ready to launch, and they're away. Great start there from John Reynolds. Look at him just popping a wheel, trying to get through the middle of it. Has he done so? No, it's that Kianari man again. Kagiyama's gone with him. Very strong stuff from the pair of them. Emmett running around the outside on the Ducati. A horde of them. The cavalry stampede over the top. But it's Kianari, Reynolds and Kagiyama. Now, just have a look at the back. Michael Rutter is nowhere. The winner from the first race is way, way back. He's got a lot of work to do as his teammate sets off to the start of this race behind him. Number two there, John Reynolds. But Michael Rutter, there he was, back in about 11th position. Yeah, just in front of the two Yamahas. He's got it all to do, but that'll be great for us. Look at this scrap between Emmett and Kagiyama. Emmett tried to run around the outside. Kagiyama holds the line. He might be wounded, but he's still fearless. Bike number 12 there, Dean Thomas in behind. 
Yeah, Dean Thomas there on the Sendo Ducati. He's been chased hard by 75. Glenn Richards, they come over the top of the hill into Bridge Corner. Richards having a look. Is he going to go down the inside as they go into Prior? And he does. Slams it down the inside. But also, Sean Emmett goes underneath Kagiyama. Well, have a look at Richards there. Talk about a hip and shoulder just trying to muscle his way past. Second time proves it. Excuse me, the big green machine is coming through. Very physical. Yeah, it was, and Scott Smart just behind him tries to follow that same route as they come through the complex now. As I said, dry tyres, slick tyres, they're really going to get on it this time around into that very slow chicane. There goes Kianari, 23, behind him, John Reynolds. There's Sean Emmett in third place, but under pressure from Kagayama. Look at that, as the bike, the really rear end lifts up as they brake so hard into this slow first or second gear corner, depending on your gearing, accelerating up the hill, up to about 140 miles an hour, fourth gear, back into third as they go under the bridge. And there's Kagiyama, foot off the footrest. Now, was that a physical problem, or does he have a problem with a motorcycle? We wait and see, but John Reynolds... Well, there's a problem. Foot. There's a real problem, Steve. Kayanari running wide, just losing it into the first left-hander, just recovers it, Reynolds through. Yeah, it looked like the rear end of that bike locked up a little bit, but John Reynolds didn't need a second invitation like a rat up a drain pipe, he takes the lead. Round one more time through Luffield. There's a bump on the circuit right here which really unsettles these riders, then they jump, stop. And Kagiyama must have had a problem. There he is, he dropped out and saw his foot off the footrest, so Kagiyama sadly out of this second race. Now, as we get, look at Rutter now, he is closing in on Glenn Richards, he's on the inside as they come down into turn one. Does he get through this time around? No, he doesn't. That just goes to prove how good that Kawasaki is. Although it's underdeveloped, it still handles pretty good. He's riding it long tonto there through that right-hander, bucking and weaving all over the place, but Glenn Richards hugely, hugely committed, does not give up, very forceful rider. No, that's right now, Rutter, this is the battle for fourth place. He's going to go through these S's here. He'll probably use the speed and power of that Honda, reputedly 210 horsepower out of there. Third gear, fourth, fifth. Will the Honda have the speed as they go over the bumps there? Rutter on the inside line, just as easy as that, like knife through butter. John Reynolds coming into the complex now, moving up on a back marker. This could be a very, very tricky moment. Yeah, well, they're coming to a busy part of the circuit now, into the left-hander at Brooklands. So That's Paul Jones, the privateer, getting lapped in front of him. Reynolds will be keen to get past quickly. He doesn't want to lose any time, and he's not happy. Understandably, Paul Jones not getting out of the way. There are blue flags, but Reynolds now through. Will Kianari now be able to get through as quickly? And Rutter! Rutter just lunged down the inside. That was all due to the Paul Jones shuffle there. I think Kianari got held up a little bit there. Almost certainly Michael Rutter again didn't need any invitation so he goes through into second position uh oh there is the oil on the track there there's certainly fire on the track Glenn Richards is down on that Kawasaki that needs to be put out quickly it's gonna be expensive what happened there with Glenn Richards high side it flicked him over the top there down he goes pretty heavy crash there from 75 a lap to go, this is it, the closing stages now. Through Maggots and Beckett's into the right-hander for the drag down the hill. Can Rutter do it? He's close. Has he timed this to perfection? Number three, Michael Rutter in second place as they flick through there. We know the speed of this Honda coming up to one of the fastest part of the circuit now. He's not quite close enough to be in the slipstream. Rutter, is he going to be close enough to take the double here at Silverstone? He's got to line it up perfectly here, hasn't it? Because we've got the big hill now coming up out of Abbey Corner. Reynolds really working hard. Where's Rutter? Where is he? He's not quite... Could he do a desperate into the complex? Well, it just depends how quick he is through there. He's broken the lap record, getting himself up to this second place as they come down into this complex section now. So Rutter closing, closing all the time, but it is going to be tight. John Reynolds, not an easy... Oh, he's made a mistake. Oh, terrible stuff. And yes, he's given to his teammate. Kianari's come back through. Rutter just runs that little bit wide. Boy, he'll be kicking himself for that bad start. Interestingly, we saw Kianari have a similar mistake early in the race. Maybe the Honda slipper clutch not working quite right just yet, but that was a bit of a mistake, a big mistake, because Rutter's gone from second back to third. Reynolds going to take the win. Absolutely. JR, podium first time, pops the front wheel because John Reynolds Suzuki wins race two as he delighted. Kianari second again, and Michael Rutter third. Jubilation in the Rizla team, and why not? They deserve it. An estimated 25,000 people turned up to watch this racing here at Brands Hatch. These four watching dead ahead. Revs are up, ready for a start, and they're away. Good start there for Kagiyama. Great start for Emmett as well. Side by side into Paddock Hill for the first time. Kagiyama leads, but not for long. Look at that. 
John Reynolds sweeps around the outside of his teammate, down through Paddock Hill for the first time. Rutter had a shocker. As did his teammate, Kianari. He really didn't get off the line at all well. But number six there, Gary Mason, Virgin Yamaha. He has got a storming start. Look at those Kawasaki's. Glenn Rich is down into fourth place, passing Sean Emmett. Yeah, that's not on the script, is it? Emmett gets shuffled back. So you've got a Yamaha third, a Kawasaki fourth. Rob Mack might have been scratching his head about what these Virgin Yamahas were going to do, but this is really encouraging. Yeah, much, much better for the young 23-year-old lad from near Birmingham, Gary Mason there. So as they go around, clearways corner, accelerating hard out of here. Cold tyres still, got to be a bit careful. Now keep an eye on Emmett, he's got the slingshot out of clearways. Well, this is good for Mason, he's very much in touch with Kagiyama, has a little bit of a sniff towards Paddock. Now look at Emmett fighting back, he wants that spot back and he's got it. Straight back past Glenn Richards, bit of a screw, oh no! Huge contact down the bottom of the hill, they were flying. That's Richards into the back of Emmett. Wow. Uh, well, Emmett's all right, where's Richards? That was a big off, Steve. Yeah, it was a huge accident. That's 120 mile an hour corner. And what's happened there, Emmett's had a big slide. He lost the back end of that bike, didn't get the drive, didn't accelerate as Richard thought he was going to and had nowhere to go. Glenn Richards, unfortunately, that big 1,000cc Kawasaki just rode right up the back of Sean Emmett's Ducati. Yeah, have a look. You can see Richard's just at the end. There's the big move. Then Richard's just at the end sits up when he realises yeah, but the closing speed was way too fast, and they are both lucky guys to get up from that. As I said, 120 miles an hour there as they're accelerating out the bottom of Paddock Hill Bend. Huge crash. Well, as a disconsolate, Sean Emmett walks back. Safety car out, obviously. Got to clear up that debris, and poor old Glenn Richards has to regroup. OK. Let's regroup ourselves. Safety cars in, ready for a restart. And John Reynolds has really made the most of that across the line. Reynolds has stretched out his advantage. Gary Mason still pushing pretty hard, trying to find a way around Kagiyama. And how about that? The Kawasaki's still sitting in fourth spot. Scott Smart's going well. And look at Dean Thomas. Dean Thomas there going extremely well on that ex James Toesland. 998 Ducati there, number 12. But yeah, Yukio Kagiyama, I think he was a bit sluggish off the start there after the safety car came in. And look at that. Smart, straight that through. is Scott Smart going underneath Gary Mason down into that bottom left hand Graham Hill bend. Now, round the outside, now you watch your cut back on the Michelin tyres. Remember that Honda Fireblade, the HM machine, he cuts back on the inside, gets the drive, and just check that out. Michael Rutter storms through there, and that was grip and horsepower combined. It is Yukio Kagiyama, followed by Scott Smart there and Michael Rutter. Bike number three at the back of this pack, and he is very much on a charge. He's just put in the fastest lap, so Michael Rutter is the man that's on the move. Oh, look at that big time on the move, and as though he just hit the turbo button straight past. Power as well. Exactly as we saw him do with Gary Mason a few laps back, and that Honda really just seems to sit down, grip and drive out of that corner. He is so much faster than anyone else out of that part of the circuit. Down the inside there he goes on bike number 88, Scott Smart. Yeah, and if he can get past Scott Smart that quickly, bearing in mind Scott was having a very good run on that Kawasaki, Yukio Kagiyama, the next man on his list there on the blue bike, is really going to have his hands full trying to fend off Rutter. It's, it feels like when, not if. Yeah, apart from the problem is he's got Paul Jones in front of him now. We saw Paul Jones actually get in the way at Silverstone. Hope he moves out the way because Kagiyama's coming through. He's coming through on the inside. And if he's not careful, look at this. Uh, it's very, very tight indeed. Three and a two don't go. That was just too narrow. It looked as though Kagiyama lost a bit of his run there. Absolutely played right into the hands of Michael Rutter. So now it is Reynolds. Rutter, Kagiyama and Smart, Thomas. And then look at that, Cork up there in seventh position. That's good for the privateer. That's number 12, Dean Thomas. Boy, we were just saying how well he done. I've got to keep my mouth shut. That Sendo bike was having a very good run. He's down at clearways and it was so near the end of the race. As you can see, on the last lap, Michael Rutter here, bike number three, is not going to catch John Reynolds now. John Reynolds, too much of a lead. No, just 1.2 miles to go around Druid's corner. John Reynolds, the true professional, he's got his heart set on this championship this year, and who would bet against him as he comes down into Graham Hill Bend for the final time. He'll come out of there, third gear start accelerating. You can see the black lines, front wheel goes up in the air. Michael Rutter can do nothing about him here today in this first race. Yeah, and he's going to come out of this as well with a handy lead in the championship with another race to go this afternoon but around clearways for the last time, and it's JR on the Suzuki, puts his head down. This is going to be a lovely, wide-open lead for him. Reynolds across the stripe to take race one of the day. 
great win for John Reynolds. Rizla Suzuki, Michael Rutt, a lovely ride there, had to come all the way through the pack. And let's not... The sun's still shining here at Brands Hatch, got an awful lot hotter. In fact, the track is up to about 31 degrees. I don't know if there's been any major tyre changes on the base of that, but I can tell you, Glenn Richards is OK after crashing out in race one. Old set, Glenn? Yeah, mate, I've, I definitely have felt better. And, uh, you know, fortunately, I've got a, my number two bike here. I rode it this morning. That feels really good. Uh, just got to see whether I can do it. So uh, I am quite sore. All right, well, there you go. Race is about to start, so let's cross to the commentary team of Steve Parrish and Charlie Cox. Absolutely astonishing that Glenn Richards is even sitting on a motorcycle, let alone contemplating race two, but he is, as is everybody else, on the front row and all the way through the field. Emmett to the right, and he's away. Good start, terrible start again for Rutter. Better start for his teammate, Kianari. Up the inside, bike number 23, third place. Just behind Emmett, who's behind Kagiyama. John Reynolds made a hash of that as well, got bogged. Yeah, him and Rutter have got some work to do. First and second in race one are way, way back. Yukio Kagiyama, though, who's looking forward to going home to see his newborn child, leads this race on the first lap. But now, Sean Emmett, if he could just keep it all together this time around. He was the hot favourite, he was pole position. Let's just see what he can do. Well, Kakayama's in a hurry to see that new baby of his, and boy, is he what? First across the line, he'll be first back to the airport. Round into clearways for the first time. Emmett really lining him up. Look at that. Emmett running wide round the outside, trying to get a slingshot run on the monster mob Ducati down the back straight. This is looking good. Yeah, he's got that inside line. It's the shortest route. Sean Emmett there, neck and neck over the line, about 165 miles an hour. Can Emmett do it? And he does. Yeah, really just muscles his way in. There's nothing wrong with the squirt on that Suzuki. But Emmett just put the bike exactly where he wanted to be. Now, here are the teammates, Rutter and Kianari. We don't see that much of him, really, but he's actually very, very effective indeed, running fourth on the road, Rutter fifth, trying to get past to get valuable championship points. Yeah, one of the problems for Kianari is a brand new circuit for him. He's never been here before, so he's had to learn it in these last couple of days. Not doing a bad job, but he's got a guy right behind him that knows it like the back of his hand. Again, Rutter takes slightly wider line than he looks. He cuts to the inside, and he just seems to power his way out of there, gets the grip, gets the drive over that start and finish line again. One more place. Yeah, the bike is terrific, and the grip's great, as you were saying, Steve, but the, you can't take it away from the rider. That was identical bike there, but he's just fired out. He knew exactly where to put it. He knew where the track bumps were, where the grip is on that circuit, and sometimes if you just stay a little bit offline, there's a bit more grip there. It's not quite so worn out. This indie circuit does get a lot of use, and there he goes. Scott Smart again down into Graham Hill, Ben, on that ZX-10R. Scott Smart is doing a tremendous job. And with all the work that Michael Rutter and indeed John Reynolds have got to do this, of course. Oh, both of them onto the grass. Talk about a bit of enthusiasm. Scott Smart and Kagiyama. Now, that's a huge help if they can just work their way around for Rutter and Reynolds and indeed Kianari, who's getting pushed very, very wide there. Three abreast. What a squeeze. Four. That's Kianari. 88 to Scott Smart. Trying to weave his way through and through the eye of the needle is John Reynolds, and he's just done it. And there it is, look at that, Kagiyama down the inside, having a go at squeezing down the inside, he hit Scott Smart, they both had to pick the bikes up and did well to stay on them. Yeah, and they had no grip at all coming back onto the straight after running across the grass there. Bikes all over the place, down the back straight again, 88, that's Scott Smart, 23 is Kianari, and 71 there, there's Kagiyama. Bit of consternation there in the Rizla camp, why wouldn't there be? Boys needed to keep it on the black stuff. They're coming up on number 28, Paul Jones again. Emmett's got through. Will Jones get out of the way? There'll be some blue flags, I'm sure. Rutter, he's down the inside. What about John Reynolds? It looks to me like John Reynolds is going to get held up, and he has. He has to take the wide line. He won't be happy about that. Poor John Reynolds has lost a lot of time there. Yeah, waving his hand, kicking his foot up in the air. Um, that's bike language for I really think you ought to have let me through there, you know. Yeah, well, I think Paul Jones better read those signs that say think out yeah, on the circuit yeah. quite possibly. But see, Rutter, number three, gets through on the HM plant Honda. John Reynolds has to take the wide line, and it's not uh, good news for him. And he kicks out there. <laughs> I don't think that was probably just a signal. He didn't really mean to kick him. No, of course not. But it's come absolutely at the wrong end of this race for John Reynolds because we're on the last lap now, losing momentum like that, as you can see. He's just drifted back into the distance. He's out of the frame now. A podium's the best he can do. But what can Michael Rutter do about Sean Emmett? It'll be a real long shot to try to pick up a spot fast running out of corners. Yeah, Emmett on that monster mob 999. Ducati, and he has oh, a bit boy, of a oh, moment there, but he got on the power, he didn't shut the throttle. I bet he is very, very sore, but Emmett will be making that 999 as wide as he possibly can now. If he gets into clearways here, he gets good drive out of this corner. So Emmett leads on the Dunlop shot, 
999. Ratter doing everything he can to get those Mitchellists to grip, but he's not going to do it. Yeah, that was his trick, but it's just not enough left in it for Michael Rutter. Emmett crosses the line first. A win, and boy, did he need that. Congratulations to the Monster Mob team. Mike Just the worst case scenario to go down and be taken, one taken out as such. I mean, I had a slide and lost my footing a bit and went across the track. And Glenn just probably had nowhere to go and just rammed and punted me off. So I was lucky to get away with it without, you know, really injuring myself. So let's see the finger there. How bad is it? Broken, you think? Yeah, just, I think so. Probably cracked, um, broken. But I'll get down the hospital at some stage and get them to have a look at it. Just means you have to drink the, that champagne with your right hand tonight. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't matter. Any hand will do. And it's going to be a very tough journey because these guys on the front row, they've all qualified at such incredibly fast paces. The revs are up as they get ready for the start. Can Rutter get that Honda off the line? And it didn't look good. Absolutely bogged. They're flying past him. Up to the first corner, looks like John Reynolds in the lead there. Kianari's almost going with him. Definitely the faster of the Hondas. But Emmett in the second place. Kianari running a little bit wide, so it's J.R. Reynolds. Oh, a bit of bump and bore there as well with those Kawasaki's in the middle of that lead pack onto the back straight for the first time. Rutter's got it all to do. Absolutely. Now, Kianari nearly got wiped out at Richie's corner there, so he's going backwards. But at the front, it is that number two Suzuki of John Reynolds. Look at him down the Revit straight there, nearly 180 miles an hour, but Emmett got in the toe. Oh, great stuff. Just tippy-toeing around there, hanging onto it. Remember, he's hanging onto a broken finger as well. That won't have been comfortable. Under brakes there the first time. That will have been tough, but it's really short Emmett, number five there. He got the run out of that CS corner onto the straight, used the speed of the 999 Monster Mob Ducati to take the lead. Dean Thomas converted that second place on the grid well there. He's sitting in third. Yeah, it'd be very interesting to see how he goes as this race unfolds. Struggled a little bit during race distance at Brands Hatch. And have a look at that as well. Talking about coming back from injury, Kagiyama's having a great run here. Fourth place, remember, he started off row two. Absolutely. I can't even believe he is racing. I watched him during qualifying. He got off the bike and can barely walk. Absolutely amazing. And he really shouldn't even be out on the racetrack. Now, this is injuries. good stuff from Steve Plater there on that Yamaha. He's pushing pretty hard, and Michael Rutter in behind him with so much work to do, starting in pole position way down there. So many people to try to get through. Yeah, now Honda have got to look at this clutch on this uh, Fireblade Honda. It's an awkward machine to get off the line, and you've got to remember with all the noise all around you and everyone just edging forward. Look at that Kagiyama there, charges through. 71, Kagiyama goes past Dean Thomas like he was standing still. Look at Kagiyama starting to chomp on the back of John Reynolds Suzuki. So you've got Ducati, Suzuki, Suzuki, Ducati. But that bike in the third position looks really, really tight, and that's Kagiyama. Yeah, they're both in the slipstream, but Yukio, Kagiyama, take that. Three abreast down the back straight. This has got to be sorted by the corner. Kagiyama, don't bite it, take the whole piece. Two of them in one go, takes the lead. Unbelievable. And this scrap at the front is going hammer and tong. Reynolds just slipped through there at Russell, but I think Kagiyama wants him back into turn one. Straight through the copybook. 
Yeah, he did want him back. Look at that, but John Reynolds keeps the tighter line, and they are brushing paintwork there. Kageyama back up the inside. And Kageyama is back up the inside again. JR running a little bit wide, no contact there, but it might have balked his run onto the back straight. That's great news for the red machine there, Sean Emmett. Yeah, Sean Emmett, monster mob Ducati. Can he get in the slips him? I don't think he has the speed of these big Rizzler Suzuki's down this straightaway. There's no doubt the four cylinder machines have come of age now. They really are taking over from the domination of the Ducatis. And just when you thought it was safe to go back in the water, Michael Rutter is stalking. He's just picked up Dean Thomas right behind these guys. There he is in fourth place. But the battle is Suzuki plays Suzuki. This is Corum. This is a really hairy corner. And Reynolds just slips through. Yeah, I think that was a slight mistake from Kagiyama. He went a little bit wide at the bomb hole. John Reynolds didn't need a second invitation out of this Russell's corner. Paul Denning looks on. We've got Reynolds there, Kagiyama, Emmett hanging in behind, Rutter stalking, Scott Smart, and then, of course, James Hayden, who we spoke to on the grid, just sitting there in 10th place. Coming down into the bottom corner one more time. Is Kagiyama going to do it? No, he isn't, but Rutter is. Yeah, and Rutter slipped through there nicely this time around, again, using the slipstream and the power of that HM plant Honda as he gets his way through into third spot. But still a lot of work to do. He's got to try and get past those battling Suzuki's. There's Paul Byrne, the team owner of the Monster Mod lot. <laughs> Rutter really is paying for that poor, poor start as they come into it. And there you see at the bottom, Reynolds, Rutter, Kagiyama, Emmett now, 1.2 seconds back. It really does look to be the battle of the Rizla Suzuki's at the front. That's who's going to get this race here today. And if Kagiyama can do it, I still will not believe that he's fit enough to be able to do this sort of performance. Yeah, pretty physical old place, I guess, especially with that huge break down the back straight as we watch Kagiyama one more time, lining up his teammates side by side, coming up on the first of the back markers, but Kagiyama is through. We're on the final lap, and if he finishes in second place, I'm sure the question will be harder. But if he wins this race from Kagiyama's point of view, that will be astounding. Up on the front wheel again. What a performance that would be. Yeah, it would be amazing as Kagiyama ran a little bit wide that time around, but let's just watch JR in the slipstream. But he isn't making any ground up. There's no doubt that Kagiyama's machine is the faster. Kagiyama moves over to the left because he doesn't want John Reynolds in his slipstream, but he needn't have bothered because Reynolds is not close enough. This is a Herculean effort there from Kagiyama, bike 71. Yeah, he might appear to have a bit of squirt, but boy, you can't take it away from him. He has ridden so hard. Now riding defensively just that little bit, hanging on for grim death. He's going to do this. One more corner. Corum down into the right left of Russell. This is astonishing. He can't hardly walk yet. He's riding this bike. He is amazing as he comes in there again, keeping the tight line, stopping JR getting through. Reynolds has a little look, but it's not going to work. And Yukio Kagiyama is going to pull off the seemingly impossible. Kagiyama wins. Revs are up, ready for a start. They're away. A oh, bit of a jump there from Rutter. That's not ideal. Good start for Dean Thomas. Reynolds on the blue machine. Looks like he's going to lead into turn one. Bike four on the inside of the Yamaha. That's a great start as well for Steve Plater. Emmett's going with him, and Scott Smart up into fourth on the Kawasaki. Yeah, now poor old Michael Rutter. He absolutely got swamped, and that is Scott Smart going through into third place. But, yeah, Rutter's got all the work to do again. We saw him in race one. We heard him afterwards, and he's right way, way back again. Screaming horde down the back straight. I'll tell you who else is way, way back again. See him on the right side of the screen, Yukio Kagiyama. There are a lot of bikes between us and his teammate, the race leader. This man here, Reynolds in first and Kawasaki in second. Scotsman is on fire. Absolutely, a lot of uh, cement dust on the track. There had been some oil spilt a little bit earlier on as they all go charging through there. But Scott Smart up into second place on that Hawk Kawasaki. That's as far up at the front we've seen him running on that machine. Now, what can John Reynolds do? He's got the gap. You're right about Plater. Great start from him. But look at Scott Smart through Russell's corner. Who's got the power now as they come up the centre straight here over the start and finish line at Stetton? And he's equally as fast, it seems, as that big Rizzo Suzuki. Reynolds needs to make this one stick. He was second place in race one. That was helpful, but Michael Rutter keeps accumulating the points. And as for Scott Smart, well, he's just out to do some giant killing. And no bigger giant than John Reynolds in terms of points and standings and championship lead.
This is going to be interesting now because the uh, technicians back at the Suzuki pit have been playing around with John Reynolds' bike. They've changed some of the engine management system. They've changed the bell mounts on this bike, and it does look fast, but equally, Scott Smart is right on the back. Yellow flags out, so no passing this time around as they go through the S's. But there you can see all the cement dust jumping up, flying up as they nip through there. There's Emmett, bike number five, on that Monster Mob Ducati. And he's just got past Plater, but have a look at that. The Kawasaki of Scott Smart has just got past John Reynolds. Reynolds, Kawasaki is leading this. He's got to hang on to it round Corum through Russell Corner and cross the line in the lead to get a lap down to say Kawasaki led the race and he's going to do it. And I think they're going to be leading a lot more this year as they do go out over the line. Scott Smart, Bike 88, Hawk Kawasaki leads his second race here at Snetton. Now I think John Reynolds, he maybe just had a bit of a moment on that cement dust round at the S's there in towards the bomb hell. That's where Scott Smart got through. Emmett bringing John Reynolds under a bit of pressure as well. Kagiyama running very wide there through Rich's corner. Down into Sears, the big drag on the back straight. And have a look at that. Steve Plater on the Yamaha has got back through Kagiyama with him running wide there. And while all that was going on, Scott Smart ran a little bit wide. He got on the gravelly part of the circuit. He's lost the drive down the straight and been blasted by number two, John Reynolds, and number five, Sean Emmett. The flames come out the back of that uh, Yamaha there, Steve Plater, just when you roll it off, that's unburnt fuel just firing up in the exhaust system. It looks very spectacular, but I'm sure he'd like to change that into horsepower. Look at it down the straight there. It doesn't seem to be able to follow that bike of Kagiyama's because Kagiyama has enormous amounts of speed. Yeah, and we said at the start of this, it was going to be great to see the performance of these guys down the back straight. That's a bit to do, I guess, with how Kagiyama got out of that corner too. I think it's a lot to do with it. It's always been said the most important corner on a circuit is the one leading onto the straight because that allows you to build your speed through the corner and it carries you down those straightaways. Now, Kagiyama right on the tail of number five, Emmett. G. Reynolds looks fast through here, doesn't he? The sweeping right hand at Corum. It's where he seems to put a lot of time on everyone. Yeah, hit those Dunlop tyres really are gripping nicely here in the heat at Stetson. And that was Scott Smart. I just saw in the back of the picture there, Smarty oh, no. has gone wide. Reynolds using every little bit of track he possibly can. They're just touching the dust on the edge. Real, real precision. Millimeters in it as Rutter goes straight past Kagiyama. He must have missed a gear. Yeah, I think Kagiyama missed a gear as they came out of there. It's the first gear corner, and it just seemed like he didn't have the drive. That's helped Rutter. That's one person out of the way without a big battle because for sure he was going to have to work hard to get past Kagiyama. Now, what can you do about Sean Emmett? Because he's very close, Steve, coming onto the back straight. I don't know if it'll be this time around but he's really close. Yeah, well, we'll start to see that gap. Look at that, the Honda, the front wheel comes up in the air. They're up into sixth gear now, about 176 miles an hour. Will he do it this time? He pulls to the inside of Emmett, and he's straight through. That will be so demoralizing for Sean Emmett on that 999 Monster Mob machine. John Reynolds, he leads. Rutter is right behind him in the point score. We saw after race one, a five-point lead for John Reynolds. That's going to open up just a little bit more if he can just hang on. Absolutely. John Reynolds can lead this circuit here at Snetton with a ten-point advantage with just three rounds gone. And it's going to be in the bag, up towards the stripe and across. Reynolds, Suzuki wins. Rutter, great ride in second, couldn't quite do it. And again, John Reynolds gives that Suzuki a pat on the tank. He knows that it's the bike and the team that have got him where he is. Poor old Michael Rutter will be thinking if I'd only got off the line quicker. Anyway, great ride for John Reynolds. Is he going to be the man, do you think, for the championship this year? I mean, it's going to be between you two. Yeah, definitely. You know, John's... Uh been around for a long time. I used to watch him when I was a kid, and uh, you know he's, uh, he was inch perfect in that race, and he make a mistake. I just I need to get off the start and challenge him, and till I do that, it's a waste of time at the moment. You just catch up all the time, and by the time you get up to them, uh, you know you've just you've used your tyres and everything. You just need to get off that grid. Well, John, that was a stunning ride out there. You've extended your points lead. Happy about it? Yeah, I've got to be happy about that. I mean, not just me, for Mr. Suzuki, we've worked so, so hard. As a team this weekend, you know, the mechanics were working until half past two this morning to get the bikes ready, and uh, with a bit of your input as well, we've, uh, we've managed to do it.
astonishing scenes on the warm-up lap. Vince Whittle on a Ducati goes down, tags the back of somebody else, and a fireball on the last corner. Yeah, unfortunately, that was Adam Hitchcock on the bike mag uh, Suzuki, and he just got skittled, and there's burning fuel everywhere. But that's really ruined the season for Vince Whittle. His Ducati was absolutely destroyed, but fortunately, both guys were perfectly OK. Astonishing this happened on the warm-up. Yeah, if look. you look at the back of the picture, you can see him go down. The Ducati tank splits and that is Adam Hitchcock, and then Noriyuki Haga, 41, you can see, just ride through the flames. He had nothing to do but just carry on, but fortunately he was OK. Now that's a warm welcome to Nori Haga and the British Superbike Championship, and a huge clean-up. And there's a very singed Adam Hitchcock, but he's OK, but that bike isn't, that is the bike of Vince Whittle, and it is absolutely destroyed. Fortunately, both riders OK. A clean-up on the grid as well, there's Nori Haga getting the the fumes and melt marks off the front of his visor so we can see where he's going for race one. That was a pretty lucky moment for him. It certainly was, so they're getting ready now for the start. OK, Reynolds on the right, Kagiyama on the left, Rutter and Dean Thomas away. Looks like not too bad a start there for Reynolds, but look at Kagiyama moves straight round the middle. Rutter goes in behind him. Scott Smart, a beauty contact there with Scott Smart and Rutter. Rutter's wide on the grass. He rejoins, but way down. Wow, that was bad luck for Michael Rutter. He's finally got that Honda working off the line and then gets pushed onto the grass. Look at that, number 17 there, James Ellison, the young 23-year-old rider there on the cut machine, the privateer R1 Yamaha, in third place in front of John Reynolds, number two. And have a look at that, Dean Thomas doing pretty well as well on the 998 Ducati as they go sweeping round that huge left-hander for the first time. Thomas is in attacking mode, Kagiyama is leading in through the shell hairpin and back on the drag now towards the Fulston chicane. Yeah, now this is a really tricky corner right down into second gear, they flick it through there, but it's so important getting the drive out of here, up over the top of the hill, we're now coming up towards the fastest part of the circuit, front wheels up in the air, and again, I am amazed by the Gentian racing number 17 there, James Ellison in third. Yeah, he's only a privateer as well, you can see that by the yellow number on the front of his bike through the Nickerbrook chicane, that huge break. Look at that, Reynolds in fourth position after starting for pole. And what about poor old Michael Rutter? Finally got it off the line properly, then shoveled wide. We knew it wouldn't be long before Honda sorted that clutch problem out, and he did get away well, but he and Scott Smart were looking for the same piece of tarmac, and Scott Smart certainly came off better because he's there in sixth position on that 88 Kawasaki, down into the braking zone again. Yeah, have a look at that, John Reynolds, he's in a hurry, down the inside of James Ellison. Oh, a bit of a wriggle there for Ellison trying to tap on the power. Up and over Deer Leap and across the stripe for the first time. Reynolds on the fight back. Poor old Stuart Easton on the ETI Ducati out very early on. He's just back from that injury at Brands Hatch. Kageyama now still threading his way through in the lead. Up towards Clay Hill again. That really tight right left at Nickerbrook. Getting the power down. Reynolds now is really starting to close down that 998 Ducati. And they're really starting to drop off James Ellison through Drew. It's the double right hander. So important to line this corner up properly for the drag. Down the back straight, the lodge corner. Yeah, tricky corner, Drew. It's quite ripply and uh, it's easy to get some pattering again. Top JR, down. even on that dirty track there where we saw that accident earlier on, they put cement dust down there to try and dry out all the burnt fuel and everything there, but he is through into second place. Yeah, straight there under brakes in Lodge, one of the most popular passing places in cars or bikes. Oh, no, Noriyuki Haga. I, I guess he's just run wide. Um, no mechanical problem, you can see. I'm going to ask you why in a minute, as we watch John Reynolds chasing and challenging the lead and takes it from his teammate, JR in the lead. Last corner of the lap, up and over Deer Leap, and he's through. Yeah, he is, a very, very brave move. Again, you can see that dirty track there, takes the inside line, tucks it down nice and tight inside of, uh, of that other Rizla Suzuki there of Kageyama. So Reynolds leads this race. Out through Fulston chicane, up and over the crest of the hill. A huge run down the hill with a monster break at Nickerbrook at the bottom. He will get this for sure. Yeah, nice, neat move there from Michael Rutter. He used the horsepower of that uh, Fireblade Honda up over the top and then was very, very late on the brakes. Now up over the top of this hill. And this is the move. He's got himself on the inside. Look at the front end of those bikes, really dip down. Ellison, smart move there, lets him go through. The best thing he can do is tag on the back of Rutter. And what's going on here? That's Harger back into the pit, so yeah. Yeah, he's a retiree from the, I uh, think, British Superbike Championship and sad for him at this first race. 
Now here's the scrap for third, and you have to think to yourself that poor old Dean Thomas on that 998 will be overwhelmed by that full factory Honda, but he puts up a bit of a fight, made Michael Rutter really work for that into Nickerbrook. Yeah, he didn't want to let him have it, did he? Dean Thomas there, bike number 12, but he pulled over eventually and lets Rutter through into third spot. John Reynolds with the red crash helmet there, the man in the lead needing to keep it tight there, and he does. Kagiyama, his teammate, trying to find a way past. There are two big braking zones left. This is one of them into Nickerbrook chicane. He pushes through, Kagiyama hangs on and gets through. That was tight and that was very, very close. John Reynolds will not be happy. We know he doesn't like losing. And look at that, oh, oh. Kagiyama lays the rubber down. There is Paul Denning. He is as white as a ghost watching this. Hold your breath, he got half a lap left into Druids. Reynolds tries to fight back. This is the double right-hander. One corner left, he can do it. He's passed other people here, down into Lodge, hard under brakes. Last corner, can he do it? Oh, it's tight. Oh, Kagiyama's got it. Yeah, he has. Kagiyama was so late on the brakes, even John Reynolds couldn't do anything about it. This is the drag to the line. Unbelievable over the elite and across the stripe. And Kagiyama wins a 1-2 for the Rizla team. Unbelievable ride. Yeah, tremendous stuff. And I keep going back to him. The man is not at all fit. John Reynolds will be most perturbed about it. And this is the pass down on the inside. John Reynolds really didn't leave him any space. Switches to the outside to see if he can get the run out the corner. But there was nothing he could do about Yukio Kagayama. A tremendous ride for him. And look at Denning. Well, you reckon Yukio's not fit? He won't be when JR gets back. He'll probably kick him in the shins. Well, I'm standing in the front row of the grid in a position that should be occupied by Michael Rutter. He's actually starting from the pit lane now, and a man, well, he's standing in a space. I'm sure he'd like to be on a bike standing in a space is Steve Flater. Well, Rob said you're a passionate guy, but you look like a pretty unhappy guy at the moment. Yeah, pretty unhappy, you know. I've been having some bad luck recently, and it seems to have gotten, gotten worse here at Alton Park, but uh, hopefully when my injuries recover, I'll be getting much better and uh, getting back on song. How is the wrist? Uh, a badly broken radius and some nerve damage, but... Um, They've assured me sort of, uh, six weeks' time we should be uh, looking to be fit again. Tiny bit of good news for Michael Rudder Craig. They've just let him start off the back of the grid. There he is there because he did the warm-up lap. Reps are up, ready for a start. Good start there from Reynolds. And Kagiyama on the inside getting away well too. Dean Thomas pushing hard. But have a look at that. Look who's in the lead. Gary Mason on a Yamaha. Well, he's sure got the Rob Max script. Yeah, fabulous start there from Gary Mason, number six. Virgin Mobile Yamaha leads. John Reynolds, number two, and look at that. Dean Thomas is right in there as they come out of that Cascades corner. Yeah, and a great start there as well for young James Ellison, the privateer. He's just about to be passed by Kagiyama, but there's no shame in that, and he's not passed by Kagiyama. Shuts the door through the fast left-hander. Down into shell corner, this fabulous cascade of colour now. As look at this. Tries to ride around the outside, Dean Thomas and John Reynolds just banging panels there. Really tough stuff yeah, from Thomas. <laughs> John Reynolds looked to me like he ran him up the hill there a little bit on that banked corner. And there's some smiles in the Virgin Mobile team there. Rob Mack and the team are enjoying this as Gary Mason leads this race. Will he cross the line in front? And Kagiyama in a charge straight past on that braking zone there into Nickerbrook corner just lunges past Dean Thomas. So Dean Thomas on the Ducati back into fourth place. Ellison fifth behind him, but at the front, it is Gary Mason on that Yamaha. Into Druid's corner, the double right-hander. Now, John Reynolds is going to want to deal with this quickly if he possibly can, because his teammate who pipped him at the post in race one is right behind him. Yeah, there's no doubt, but this is copybook stuff here. Look at that, Reynolds again on the inside. The track looking a bit cleaner this time around. Mason goes back into second, but Kagiyama now looks to the other side. Up over the start and finish line, 140 mile an hour wheelie as they come through for another lap. Old Hall corner, the right-hander. Second place now for Gary Mason. John Reynolds leads. That's just what JR needs. Remember, he's going for his 50th win this time out. He really needs his teammate to be held up because he's the guy, the danger man for John Reynolds. Reynolds, Mason, Kagiyama, Thomas. That's your top four. Starting to gap the field a little bit too. Yeah, these four are pulling away. And look at this. Kagiyama has another look on the inside. Not this time around, though. Mason on the Virgin Yamaha. Shuts the door nicely. But Kagiyama will probably have another look as they go into the shallow oars corner. And Kagiyama's tough under brakes, but there was nothing wrong with the horsepower of that Yamaha down the back straight. Steve. No, I think it's all down to uh, chassis situations. They seem to be having some chattering and the guys are not confident. Uh-oh. Nightmare City there, that's Sean Emmett. We haven't seen him all weekend. 
He's having a dreadful weekend here with that monster Bob Ducati, and he likes the circuit, so I'm really quite surprised by that. OK, Kagiyama, he loves this part of the circuit in particular, the braking zone into Nickerbrook, that's where he got his teammate a lap ago, and now he's got Mason. Yeah, same thing, nice and easy, just puts it down the inside, and uh, Mason had nowhere to go whatsoever, so now we're back to this battle, and then Paul, Paul Denning again, <laughs> enjoyed it. There's Neil Tuxworth, he's watching his man, Michael Rutter, who is coming all the way from the back of that grid. Yeah, he's scything his way through the field, but have a look at the gap between those two and the rest. Dean Thomas there in third place on the Ducati, and Michael Rutter is moving up to fourth and challenging very hard for third down into Nickerbrook, but not close enough. But how about that great performance by Dean Thomas on the 998 machine? I mean, it's the fastest Ducati out there. It does seem as though they have a few problems with the 999 bike, even in the World Superbikes with James Tozen. They haven't been consistent. It seems like it's a little critical on getting the bike set up. Not so for this man, though. Look at this, Michael Rutter, number three. He is absolutely flying, has just set the lap record here at Alton Park, very, very close to 100 mile an hour average. Coming now down into Lodge Corner. Carried the speed on the back straight and ran it down under brakes. Dean Thomas is very reluctant to give anybody a square inch, and why should he? He fought that all the way into the corner. Kagiyama climbing all over the place. John Reynolds, Mr. Smooth. Lodge corner, he's having a sniff. Has he carried enough speed? Yes, he has. He's through. Now can Reynolds do the switchback down through Deer Leap? The Rizla boss, they're looking concerned, and why wouldn't he be? Both his machines catapulting across the line on the last lap now. Right, now it's time for John Reynolds to assiduously study his teammate as they charge off down towards Cascades Corner. He now has the opportunity to mug his teammate. We saw it happen in race one the other way round. Now, John Reynolds, has he got anything up his sleeve? Here's that pass again. Classic. Absolutely, down into Lodge Corner, just tucked himself nicely on the inside. You'll see John Reynolds try and switch to the inside there. Side by side, Reynolds is trying to line him up, but he just hasn't carried enough speed through there. Can he be tidier? Can he carry enough speed down through the elite? It looked as though Kagiyama was neat enough, and he's done it. Kagiyama bags the double. It's a double-double for Suzuki, and it's a double win for Gagiyama. And you can just see the relief in that team. What a day for the Rizla Suzuki team here at Alton Park. day here in County Kildare can I say on behalf of the Irish Tourist Board it's always like this in Ireland and what a day to make your 100 British Superbike appearance which James Hayden is actually doing today now James you've had a rocky time obviously you're with this team back in 2001 you had an unfortunate time with Foggy Patronus then you rode the Ducati at Snetterdon and now you're on the four that's a three to a two to a four cylinder how are you feeling yeah no, uh, yeah good um, I mean I was just very, very rusty obviously being out of practice not riding but uh, it's been great to get back on the Virgin Yamaha and you know we've been uh, been working really well through qualifying, improving the bike all the time, and uh, you know we're, we're slowly getting there. We're not quite there yet, but I'm feeling better. I'm getting better, so yeah, watch this space. Well, there's been new parts from the Honda factory for Michael Rutter to make him get away from the line, so let's hope he does here at Mondello. Let's watch revs are up, ready for a start in the foreground. That seemed to work, Steve, all right. Absolutely away, smooth as you like, Michael Rutter. JR getting a little bit swamped, and hang on, who's this protagonist on the Kawasaki? None other than Mr. Smart, muscling his way down the inside. Can he hang on to it through that left-hander? No, Rutter just eases him out at Stenner. Belter of a start, though, for Scott Smart. Yeah, fabulous start, and as you say, a lot of that hard shoving going on there on that first corner. Scott Smart went pretty good here last year, as did the Kawasaki's, but these are the new ZX 10,000s, of course. Last year, they were on 750s. Interesting to see. Michael Rutter, I think that's the best start we've seen him have all year. It was an absolute blinder, wasn't it? Can't wait for this battle. Have a look at this. Glenn Richards getting very, very agitated, wanting to chew a piece out of the rear end of that Suzuki. No luck, though, as it holds the line. Scott Smart in tight. 
JR doesn't like this at all. Reynolds on the blue machine. That's your Suzuki. He's been ultimately super fast around here, but finally seen off by Michael Rutter in qualifying. If he's going to make a dent in Michael Rutter, he'll need to get this sort of pretty quick smart with a Kawasaki. Yeah, he will do, and uh, no doubt about it. It's tough to pass around here. Very, very bumpy. Remember, John Reynolds, that Rizzo Suzuki, has about 200 horsepower. There's not much time and place to use it because he just wants to wheelie everywhere. It wants to spin out everywhere on these bumps. They're all using low gears, obviously a short circuit. Second, third gear corners mainly. This is a second gear corner now. Around the long left-hander up towards the... The faster left, but then up towards a very, very tight Dunlop right-handed hairpin. This is what they're going up towards now. Plenty of lumps and bumps around here as we come down into Dunlop. The really tight right-hander, JR just threw, absolutely balked Scott's, but he fights back. Line by line, Kawasaki just pulls back in. Nice try there by JR, but Scott Smart was up to it. Yeah, JR was up the inside. Look at those bikes bumping around. JR's oh, done it this time. Again. Yeah, fantastic. John Reynolds was late, but Scott Smart turned that Kawasaki. Reynolds has the inside line, though, through standard corner. Just, but look at the bike. It really is all over the place. Oh, right up. Cowboy down the back straight. The run down the hill. It's bumpy as you like. Fast right-hander here. It tightens up on itself, and then the rise out. Really hard to get a good exit speed. Yeah, it is hard to get out of there, and it's kind of a bit of a negative camera as they come over the top of the hill. Now down into this other 180-degree left-hander holiday in island corner again they resurfaced this last year you just look at that machine the back end of that uh, suzuki of john Reynolds. it is just grappling for grip i'll tell you what mate they might have resurfaced it but it's still a black run tons of moguls around here fabulous circuit to watch difficult to pass all of this has been great for michael rutter look how far he's now in front and reynolds has got it all to do again scott smart didn't get the suzuki skip hang on richard wants to go as well these green guys are really giving him a headache I don't believe this. Gary Mason out of this race. That's his second DNF this year. Things not going at all well out. Reynolds but they back. are for JR, absolutely. That's one down, one to go. That's a big presumption because these Kawasaki's are very strong and don't ride off Glenn Richards. He'll want a piece of this yet. Have a look at this. This is 100%. He's through, but can he hold it in tight enough to stop Scott Smart fighting back? This is tight, but this time he's done it. That was forceful. Yeah, very forceful. John went in there fast, got a good run out, but Scott Smart had a good old look, didn't he, to go back underneath him at that uh, turn 7B. So Scott Smart's all of a sudden had to relinquish that second position. Definitely the gap at the front is closing. Yeah, this is fascinating now, isn't it? What can Reynolds do? He's just done a oh. fast... No, believe that that's Michael Rutter! The race leading down! Unforced error. Unbelievable stuff. He's right, really close he is right on the back of John Reynolds now. I don't think Reynolds is quite aware of this. Look at this. Surely he's not going to stuff him up on the last corner. Oh, unbelievable stuff. Death defying. Scott Smart lunges down the inside. Unbelievable stuff. John Reynolds side by side, dragged to the line. What can they do? Well, Scott Smart. I don't know Smart who's got that. Gone. I have no idea. That would look like a photo finish there. Kawasaki's reckon that they've got it. John Reynolds, if he's lost that, that is incredible. Well, there it is, confirmation, two thousandths of a second, number 88, Scott Smart won the race. Now, here's the pass. Well, John Reynolds has just left a, a gap there, big enough for a bus, and I think he must have gone to sleep on the last lap. A look over the shoulder wouldn't have done any harm, would it? Look at that, a great effort for the Hawk Kawasaki team. They have worked all year around, building, getting that bike ready, they got it late, and that is fantastic to see. Revs are up, ready for a start again. Almost a bit of a creep there from Michael Rutter, but he did the job again. Screaming into the first corner. Scott Smart, boy, is he buoyed up by this. He wants to muscle through. Rutter says, not in your life, sunshine. I've tasted the time, mate, once. We've got a rider down there, right in the middle of the pack. Dean Thomas, nightmare in a bubble car, qualified on the front row of the grid. First Ducati home race one. What happened, Steve? Well, he comes into Honda corner, then gets really rammed up the inside. Then he bashes straight into poor old Gary Mason on the Virgin Mobile. Yamaha, so yeah, absolute mayhem there at that first corner. Oh, oh sorry, me, Tommy, Tom hang on to a sunshine. Tommy Hill on the Virgin Mobile, Yamaha there, just about fired himself out of the seat, still there. Must have scared John Reynolds, who was behind him, because he hasn't got past, that is for sure. But this is the best showing we've seen from one of these Yamahas this year, I reckon. Tommy Hill, note to self, have found a level of adhesion. But while all of this is going on, right up at the sharp end, Michael Rutter is not actually going mad, is he? He's being very, very calm and uh, 
not trying to go ballistic and hop off the bike too early. Well, I think that's... Oh, oh Reynolds, John Reynolds straight through his mix. Finally, John Reynolds realised he does not want to follow Tommy Hill when he's doing antics or having antics like that. But I think uh, I think they are probably going, but I just think the way things are at the moment, Rutter has decided just to kind of pace himself throughout this race. Obviously, that probably had in race one crashing out. It uh, about the limit of adhesion, no doubt. Yeah, well, he said to us last night, this is a very bumpy circuit. The gap between being on top of it and being off the bike is really fine. Oh, and Glenn Richards there, he was finding a bump bike, 75 in fifth place. Really was nearly out of the seat that time around. So, John Reynolds, can he get past Smart again? We saw him in race one, squeeze through there, then it all went wrong for him in the last corner. Hey, oh! Yeah, this is looking very purposeful from John Reynolds. Straight down the inside, no mucking about this time. Michael Rutter just caressing this machine home now. Fast running out of corners for John Reynolds to do anything about it. This is the way it's looking. In behind the pits, Michael Rutter has a cautionary look over his shoulder. And he's saying to himself, yes, this time I've got it. I know he desperately wanted to win. He pats the tank. Michael Rutter takes the win. Job done, Michael Rutter. Great stuff. Second place for John Reynolds. Mrs. Rutter is quite impressed as well, as she ought to be. And Scott Smart there, enthusiastic. He thought he could get another podium, and he's done it. So Michael Rutter gets the win. We'll be thinking, boy, it could have been two. The 2.4 mile Thruxton race circuit may only be a flat airfield track, but it's one of the most demanding circuits in the UK, with its succession of ultra high speed bumpy corners. The late great Steve Hislop's 111 mile per hour lap record set in 2000 on board a Yamaha R7 makes it the fastest track in the British series and has traditionally provided fantastic racing. And the tyre manufacturers have had to build special tyres for the high temperatures. Well, race one was scarcely a couple of laps old when major drama has forced a red flag and an aggregate situation, Steve. Everything going to be redone. Absolutely, yeah. The grid will be made up of the finishing order from that, and then it's all the times get added up for aggregate. And the reason for that was Dion Compton, his Suzuki cartwheeled over the catch fencing and unfortunately slightly injured a couple of spectators. OK, ready for a restart. Green flag at the back, which means we are ready for racing. And as I remind you, this is an aggregate race. Scott Smart in the foreground, ready for a start. Looked like a pretty good start there for Rutter as well. Everyone away cleanly. Rutter getting overwhelmed. Have a look at that Ducati out on the outside. Scott Smart's going with him. JR as well, up and over the crest and down into the complex. Campbell Cobb and Seagrave for the first time standing on the brakes. Yeah, and it's always busy, isn't it, Charlie, into this complex section. You can just kind of force your way through here. And look at this. That is a great start there from Dean Thomas being chased hard by Scott Smart. Bumpy exiting out of that final part of the complex there, but now it gets really fast. But this is what he's really got to do, Steve. He's got to make this lead stick. He's fast, he's qualifying, and he's gapping them already, but he's got to bank this. Yeah, we keep hearing that his setup isn't right. I'm not so sure what the problem is, but you're absolutely right. And he is so annoyed, and so is the team. They just really want to get on the podium. Now, Steve, this is one of the parts of the circuit where, as you were saying, it's really hard to learn because it's wide incredibly fast, but you've got to pick up markers from the distance on when to turn in. Yeah, and lots and lots of bumps through this corner here. And uh, coming down there, it's extremely wide. There are lots of places to pass, but it's so important. Church corner, if you get the run out of church corner, you can see now John Reynolds, he's gone round the outside of Scott Smiley. He's got himself on the inside. Who is going to break into this corner? Reynolds oh, has a line. Oh, boy, oh, boy, how physical is that? Muscles his way through, literally pushed which is smart aside. Uh, yeah, but he screwed himself up. Look at that, John Reynolds really went through there quite slowly. Scott Smart coming back on the inside, but he can't quite make it. That's an unusual mistake there from John Reynolds. Very forceful stuff, though. Now, let's have another look at it. Real muscle pass. Yeah, well, he's come down the inside. Smart has to pick it up, otherwise he'd got a Rizla Suzuki running over his right leg. But you can see John Reynolds really goes very, very deep into that corner and actually slowed the pair off and down. But what about this man? Gregorio Levere, the Spaniard, on Yukio Kagiyama's bike, bike 71, and he really has taken to this track and is working that bike, that Rizla Suzuki, right on the back of Michael Rutter, number three now, down into church corner again. He's right in a very, very good position through this church corner. Interesting to see who has the speed down here. But Steve, he's going to have to watch it because you can't say too much about how abrasive this is, and if he hasn't got the local knowledge, he might pay in tyre wear later. But I'll tell you what, he's paying in positions on the track right now. 
because he just ridden straight past Michael Rutter and out braved him into chicane. How do you rate that, boss? Yeah, well, I was going to say, he doesn't have the, the local knowledge, but he had the bravery. He was so late on the brakes there. They're actually, these two now, reeling in Scott Smart. So this is going to be a massive battle at the front. OK, flying through Allards and up over the crest of the hill. It all tightens up here, and you've got to stand on the brakes. Let's check the aggregates one more time. Thomas from Reynolds, from Smart, from Rutter. That's your top four. Then Lavia, Sean Emmett, Gary Mason and Richards. That's your top eight. Oh, Lavia nearly firing himself out of the saddle there. That's your top eight officially, not necessarily as they appear on the track. Back to the track. Back to the track, and that bike of Lavia is wriggling around everywhere, isn't he? As he's closing in, Scott Smart now, probably, of course, trying to help out John Reynolds. John Reynolds, the man leading this championship. Gregorio Lavia has been over here, or brought over here, to try and assist his championship. Well, we saw him doing some absolutely astonishing stuff last year in World Superbike, Steve. Lavia at uh, Monza Circuit through the fast right hand of their Parabolica. He knows how to tap on the power of a big Suzuki on high-speed corners. And I bet he's enjoying riding this bike because we know the preparation of these Crescent Suzuki's is top on. He goes through, he passes Scott Smart. Smart has another look on the inside. There's Paul Denning from the Crescent Suzuki team. Now, there we are. Team formation for the Rizzler guys, and it is Gregorio Olivia behind John Reynolds as they come round Church, Go Church Corner. But I'm sure that Lavia is supposed to be riding shotgun for John Reynolds. Is he going to try and pass him? I don't know if he's riding shotgun, but I'm not sure which way it's facing. Down the inside, and he does indeed. Take that, JR. Another cheeky teammate passes you. Lavia up into second place, and it's going to be a matter of time before he takes Thomas for sure. On the track, that first three is actually first, third, second. But that's all changed again, because Lavia has taken the lead. JR wants a piece of this as well. Well, that was neat, two of them at once. That was very, very impressive. The Suzuki's, I think, have the speed over the 998 machine that Dean Thomas is riding, but they were both late on the brakes. And look at that, the Monster Mob boys, they're starting to get excited because there's their man, Sean Emmett, bike number five. Now, look at that. Sean Emmett, brave stuff down the inside, pops himself up into third place. John Reynolds nearly out of the seat, right behind Lavia. Well, Sean Emmett, a man who's been under real pressure about his performance, but you've got to say, he's lifting his game. Have a look at that. Stomping on the front end of that bike, riding around the outside of John Reynolds. That's just rude. That was incredibly impressive. Sean Emmett, a 33-year-old rider from Weybridge, has just ridden around the outside of the most experienced man in this race, 38-year-old John Reynolds. Reynolds, take that. You'd have to say, as we have another look at this pass, that Emmett is on a charge. Yeah, well, Emmett, very late on the brakes. You can see that Ducati diving down, and then he goes right round the outside. That's not a normal passing manoeuvre. It's normally done down the inside, but Sean Emmett managed to keep a nice line through the chicane as well and got good exit. Well, here comes John Reynolds. He must be listening, trying to work his way up the inside. He's on the second of the blue machines, not close enough. And look at Emmett straight past Lavier on the first of the blue machines. Emmett leads through the chicane. Lavier in behind him. JR in there. And Thomas still in touch, paying the point. Yeah, poor old Thomas going backwards, though, it seems, because Sean Emmett is charged through there. Good lap times from him. He's really got the 999 working again. It's finicky, that bike, to get sorted out. There's the HM Honda team. Taddeo Carter there, the team director, Neil Tuxworth, all watching this with great interest. And at the front, Emmett just bringing it home. The last set of corners into the right of the chicane. Drops it down for the left. One more to go, stroke that home. A wave of, a wave of victory, I believe it! He's always fallen off. Oh, I can't believe it. Look at that, levier has gone through, Rutter. Unreal, Paul Bird, the team boss of the Monster Mob lot, is going to be furious with Sean Emmett. Look at this, he comes out there, he looks over his shoulder, he really hasn't got hold of the bike. Then it starts to slide out, nearly high sizing. How did he stay on? Look, Mum, no hands. Well, there you go, Lavia crosses the line first. Michael Rutter gifted the win. So on aggregate, it is Michael Rutter, your first man home. Well, Paul Bird, that uh, was a race victory thrown away. Yeah, we haven't won many races this year, and it uh, would have been nice to have had another one. I can't actually believe that Sean did something so foolish, and uh, it's disappointing, not for us, and more so for the sponsors and for Ducati and all, and all the guys. So, you know, they worked really hard, and Sean's found a bit of form again and come out of his bad spell. And, just disappointing for something so foolish like that to happen and uh, I hope he's mad enough to be able to put his hand up and say that he made a mistake but this is just heartbreaking really heartbreaking for the whole team but you know that's life you know we've got to get on now and see if we can get out there and uh, win the second race very disappointed really rode very well obviously got to the front and then um, 
It's lack of communication, really, or un misunderstanding. The team put out plus three, as I saw it, on the last lap and thought maybe Levere crashed. Just thought it was a crash at the chicane. And they came around to start the last lap, so thought it may be a crash behind me. Um, but it turns out it was point three, which, you know, I'd, I'd rather have plus zero, because, of course, I've cruised around the last lap and waving to the crowd at a big moment at the last turn. And, you know, you made to look an idiot, really, so, yeah, not happy. Well, after all that excitement, not sure if I'm ready for race two yet, but these guys are, so let's try it again. There's John Reynolds on the row behind him is Lavia. What a stormer he had, Michael Rutter there on the Honda, the winner from the first race. And Dean Thomas, well, he's got it all to do to hang on to it, but so has Sean Emmett. Boy, oh boy, let's keep it clean. No waving to anybody. Head down all the way to the end. Red flag, revs are up, ready for a start. Can't wait for this. Oh, not a bad start there from Thomas. Pretty good start there as well from Reynolds, but straight through the middle of it. Yep, the whole shot for him, and boy, he's trying to make amends quick. Yeah, he's going to scamper off into the distance, I reckon, but there will be no waving, I'm sure. Sean Emmett, I'm sure he'll be desperate to keep his job and to win this race. And there's a lot of bunching up going down there in the inside. Michael Rutter got boxed out a little bit. So it is Emmett from Dean Thomas and Rutter around the outside, but he doesn't quite make it. Yeah, but it almost put John Reynolds off. He's, oh, he's down, Thomas. Dean Thomas. Thomas trying to tap the power and on the way out of the chicane. Yeah, coming out of C-grade corner, I think it was maybe a cold tyre, and down he went into the grass there. Now, this is all about the racing on the track. No aggregate for this race. Let's just see who can cross the line first. I'll tell you what, monster favour there for monster mob because Sean Emmett has just gapped the field. Now, take us through what happened, Steve. Well, just watch the back end of that bike. There it goes. It slides out. He shuts the throttle. It's just a typical high side. Just as he was tapping the power on, it slid out. He shut the throttle trying to save it, but it didn't work. Dean Thomas walking away, but he looked looks a bit bruised. Yeah, very important part of the circuit to try to get the speed up because that is where you go out and fast. And talk about out and fast, have a look at that. Emmett might have got away well, but Reynolds has just ridden around the outside of it. Oh, but he's gone in there very, very slow, and uh, Emmett gets back. John Reynolds, we saw him go around the outside, but look at that. That has penalised number two, John Reynolds. He's gone from first to third. If at first you don't succeed, he'll have to try that all over again. You cannot do justice to how fast these guys are going as they get up into that complex. Uh, not only that, Charlie, as you well know, you're lent over as well at the same time. So easy for the front end just to tuck under. And when you're in a slipstream situation, you arrive there so much quicker. Look at Lavia. Yeah, look at Rudder as well, having a little big, big sniff there on Sean Emmett, but Emmett hanging on to it. Lavia just motors past the boss. Rudder will be thinking to himself, OK, I need to get Emmett, need to work my way through, but he's got to watch for Lavia at the same time. How impressive is this racing? We have a Ducati leading from a Honda, then there's two Suzukis, then there's a Kawasaki and a Yamaha in there. Every single manufacturer right at the sharp end. Look at the blending, looks like a colour chart, doesn't it? Every colour under the rainbow. Moving out to the back of the circuit. Now, have a look at Lavia. He's starting to really, really muscle in onto the back of Rutter. Rutter is the second machine behind the red one, then Lavia, the second blue one being John Reynolds, who wants that spot back using a bit of track knowledge to line up. Now, down through Church Corner, this may be an opportunity if he can carry the speed through. Yeah, they go arrive at Church Corner just before their fifth, back a gear into fourth gear, depending on your gearing. Coming out of there now, look at them, really tucked in under the screen. Reynolds in the slipstream of Lavia, then he switches to the outside of Rutter. This isn't going to work, surely. It's like a high-speed traffic jam. Whoa, no! I was just going to say JR was held out one and one back, but he's off as well into the hay bales at the end of the fastest straight in the country. Wow. They don't know that at the front, Emmett's still going. Yeah, this is not good news, is it, for John Reynolds? Boy, oh boy, that was a big crash. He was on the outside of Gregorio oh, Lavia. No. Looks like he's uh, maybe twisted his shoulder or something like that, but he's out of this race, and John Reynolds, really no points for him. He's right on the outside of Lavia. Lavia looks like he has to pick it up a little bit because Rutter ran wide, and I guess that maybe just grabbed John Reynolds' his front brake lever, and down he went. So John Reynolds being brave on the outside. Paul Denning will be beside himself. Well, really, uh, poor old Gregorio Lavia will be rather embarrassed about it. It wasn't his fault, it was just a knock-on deal, but he's uh, supposed to be over here helping John Reynolds out, and Reynolds out of the race, and look at Lavia now! Boy, oh boy, he likes that spot. Hard under brakes, muscles his way past Rutter. Listen to the crowd going mad, they love it too. Nice work. There's John Reynolds. Remember, he is our championship leader. It's so important, and the face there of Paul Denning, the team boss, tells all. 
Michael Rutter making amends for that pass a lap ago. OK, Gregoria, it's done like this. But look at Emmett round the outside. Well, excuse me, that was almost a big muscle. And he does shovel his face straight past that Kawasaki. Well, I thought Emmett was off into the grandstand there with that wide, high hands and of look light. look at Ellison. Ow, I can't believe this. Ellison's got underneath Scott Smart. Now it's all going on at the front here. Look at that, Rutter going in. And look at Emmett down the inside of Lavia. They're going to go off the track, surely. Absolutely wild stuff. Now, where do they rejoin the track? Ellison almost turned himself into instant hero there. Completely overclubbed it, did Emmett. But I don't think anyone's picked up track position there, so all stations resume. Down through Church Corner. They're all bunching up. Emmett is looking for a way past. Lavia is still in touch with this. And imagine if James Ellison got himself on the podium. He'd be beside himself. Oh, so much so. You can see he loses out a little bit in the straight line speed, there's no doubt. On the braking, he's pretty good. Scott Smart there has a look on the inside. And much more considered that time around from Sean Emmett, keeping it on the black stuff and back across the stripe. Ellison, P4. Let's frame a shot of that. Absolutely. Yes. Almost P3. That's really spurred him on. Unreal. Interestingly, that was Sarah James Ellison's girlfriend hanging the pit board out. No big crews for that team. Trust you to know all the girls' names. Down into the complex one more time. And look at that, Lavia. He didn't get the script. Straight back into the lead. Rutter trying to line him up on the exit, but he won't want to waste his run onto the back straight there. No, I was trying to say it earlier on. The only thing Lavia can do for John Reynolds is look at it. He gets that bike sideways. The only thing he can do for John Reynolds now with Reynolds out of this race is to win this race, taking points away from Rutter, who's second in the championship. And buying flowers and chocolates too, I'd have thought. Running out on the back of the circuit. Rutter's got his hands full now with Emmett all over the back of him. Look at that. Emmett trying to run an inside line. Has he carried the speed through? It's very, very tight. Oh, and they're coming up to a back marker at Church Corner. That is the one place you do not need a back marker. That's oh, her, no. Lavia. That's Kyle Bryce that indicates with his foot. Lavia shakes his fist, but he was just getting swamped. They were coming from all directions. He was lucky to get away with that. And look at it now. A hundred mile an hour plus swarm into that chicane. Emmett's in front of it. Runners right behind him. And look at Scotty Smart straight through again. At the front is Sean Emmett, nicely ridden. Michael Rutter's looking medium secure there in second. And Scott Smart in third. James Ellison fighting there. The blue machine of Gregorio Lavia, who I can't say too much about in terms of how well he's done this weekend on a circuit he didn't know. No, a lot of people didn't expect him to do so well here at Thruxton. We know how difficult it is to learn it. He's got the bike working for him, and he's still not finished with, is he? He's still having a go at number 88 there, Scott Smart. So the final podium position yet to be decided. Battle for third, indeed it is. James Ellison's not out of it, but it's a bit of a forlorn hope now, I think. They're just starting to carry too much speed. There's a run down the hill here to Church Corner. He'll have to be mucho pronto out of there. Yeah, and this is where it's all about. Into Church Corner, Lavia will try to get in the slipstream of Scott Smart, almost certainly up towards that club chicane, and there he is, and Smart's bike's wriggling. Lavia just about hit the back wheel, and look at that, Ellison around the outside. Guys, Sunshine carries the speed up side by side. Oh, this is absolutely a moment to squint through. Can't quite make it. Lavia back up into third. Scott Smart, but it could have gone either way. But across the line, that's the way to do it, Sean. Hand up after he crosses the line. Great win there. Rutter second. And Lavia makes a podium. Nice work. Well, what a glorious day here at Thruxton. Amazing racing. Now, let's scratch our head with the points. Boy, oh boy, Rutter has really closed down Reynolds, courtesy of JR not finishing. Scott Smart in third, Kagiyama moves back to fourth, and Sean Emmett up into fifth. Quite a handy afternoon, all things considered. I heard something on my foot, back foot, and uh, I just turned my head, I saw it was John. It's, uh, that chicken was really crazy, and I just tried to be very safe. As you see, sometimes they pass me, and I just put the bike upright and let, let them pass because it was really dangerous. And in that lap, I remember that Michael changed the, the, the direction, maybe because Emmet also changed it, and then I have to change, but John didn't change and then just was touching me, and that's racing. Unfortunately, John's fractured his uh, collarbone, the same one he broke uh, at Silverstone at the start of 2003. The only good thing is he's still got movement in his shoulder uh, and the bone doesn't look as displaced as it did then. Um, will be x-rays first thing tomorrow morning and uh, physiotherapy thereafter and try and get him out of Brands Hatch. Obviously, the whole of the Rizla Suzuki team is devastated and uh, uh, not a nice way to sort of have someone claw back your championship lead, but DNFs will happen. We just need to come back for it as strongly as we have done in the past. 
let's take a look around the legendary how painful is it it's just uncomfy really you know um i've actually i've got a doctor here who's working very closely with me ali and uh, toby and we're basically setting the the arm so that it's in race position it's quite comfy uh, anyway anything else is, is a bit of a discomfort Paul Denning must think he's jinxed at this stage. Two broken collarbones from his two riders. I mean, that's unbelievable bad luck, isn't it? Yeah, it is really, but, you know, we're soldiering on, and at the end of the day, we're out there trying to win a championship for Rizla Suzuki, and it's a tough old game, you know. It's fantastic when things are going well, Craig, but, uh, you know, the, the job bites you back every now and again. An earlier shower of rain has left the track hugely wet for the start of the first race of the afternoon. Michael Rutter there in the foreground. Ready for a start, revs are up, Kagiyama in the distance on pole on the blue machine and they're away, looks like they're all away pretty cleanly but they're not. Huge moment there for Kagiyama, bouncing off everybody. Reynolds away though, he's up the front there with the leaders in fourth position, down the hill for the first time. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, well that's Kagiyama, bike 71, running into Tommy Hill, very, very lucky Tommy Hill there, bike number eight on the Virgin Mobile machine to hang in there, but Sean Emmett, he got the power down, off the line there, behind him Gary Mason, number six, in second position. Things going a lot better for that Virgin team this weekend. He looks concerned. Well, he's, uh, he needs some championship points, but really, John Reynolds is doing a superb job battling for the leader. Now, Reynolds went for a slightly different tyre to most of the other Dunlop runners. He had a, a Japanese Dunlop tyre. I think the team managed to get it. He's got the, him. Yeah, I think the team managed to get it from the one of the Grand Prix teams. And, oh, I spoke so oh. soon. Fight straight back again. Emmett says, not on your life, down the hill. Emmett muscles his way past John Reynolds, and he's got it all to do again. He has. Now, just watch John Reynolds. He's, uh, remember, on the big 1,000cc four-cylinder Suzuki. Emmett on the twin-cylinder V-twin Ducati. And it's all about driving these conditions. Obviously, you need the front end to stick. They come round this left hand, and now Surtees corner onto the fastest part of the circuit. This is the drag down the hill up to the sweeping right-hander and the problem these guys have got as well steve is have a look at that you can see the light is getting brighter although we had that huge downpour just before this race started it's going to dry out before this race is over yeah well it does look like there is becoming a dry line but certain corners around the back underneath the trees are staying very very damp but sean emmy doing a great job here this will perhaps uh, help his relationship with paul bird having taken that last win at Thruxton, but Reynolds really looks like he's just looking for a way past now. Yeah, just stalking him now, setting it up. There's no doubt about it, it's easier on John Reynolds' broken collarbone in these conditions than it would have been in the dry. But the amazing thing, Steve, is the, the degree to which they've gapped the field. Look, it's, it's daylight between these guys and everybody else. They're, they're, they're the class act, there's no doubt about it. It's going to be interesting to see what goes on as it keeps drying. And again, you want to get... Oh, Let's try this again. Let's try that pass again. This time he made it stick. He delivered it before the line. He didn't run it all the way up to Paddock Hill Bend. That's... Uh, wow, that's Scott Smart now. Scott Smart, who was third in the championship, remember? Now there's a pace car out. This is not going on here at the moment. What is happening? We've got a rider down there and that's affected the safety bales, so they've had to, to re-put all the crash barriers back into position before we restart. Safety car lights are off, we're ready for a restart. Poor old John Reynolds with that big lead he's got, it's squandered, it's all to do again, but he crosses the stripe, we are racing again. Emmett in behind him, and Rutter. Yeah, this has been bad news for John Reynolds, hasn't it? Because now Michael Rutter's got very much in touch with it, you can see how the track is drying enormously now down through Paddock Hill Bend. They'll have to be careful with those heavily cut tyres, they'll overheat. OK, a bit of concern there from the Monster Mob boss, and why wouldn't there be? His boy is facing it big time from Michael Rutter, and Michael Rutter has got his hands full as well. Yeah, because that is number six, Gary Mason. Up the inside, Mason goes oh, through. Oh, he's run wide, though. Oh, no. Oh, Gary Mason, Virgin Mobile Machine in the dirt there. That's not good news. But John Reynolds has just disappeared. He's kind of done a Houdini act. Gary Mason covered himself with glory all this weekend. He qualified so well and was running so strongly. Now, have a look at this guy. This is John McGuinness on that Kawasaki. Just sliding past Michael Rutter. McGuinness standing in there for the injured Glenn Richards. And he's up to, theoretically, in a podium position. Have a look at this pass. Very, very 
very impressive. Number 75 there, John McGuinness, standing in, as you said, for Glenn Richards with that broken arm. Just come back from winning three TTs, fastest man ever around that 37-mile circuit. Come back here, never been on a Kawasaki before, apart from a few laps at Mallory Park. Impressive stuff. And there's a real ding-dong going on behind them as well between Rutter and Kagiyama, but they're outside of the placings. This is the battle for second place. Right now, it's Sean Emmett, and he really needs these points. And the guy behind him, John McGuinness, well, he's got to be thinking, <laughs> I'm going to get on the podium. He's been nowhere really in track racing for the last little while. His road racing prowess is beyond and, doubt. And look at that, Kagiyama goes through. We're on the final lap now, and Yukio Kagiyama goes in front of Russell. Remember how good that is for John Reynolds. That helps the point situation. It's number two, John Reynolds. He's absolutely orchestrated this, it looks. Light years between John Reynolds and everybody else. John Reynolds riding injured. And have a look at this, the battle going right down to the wire. Emmett just hanging on, but McGuinness on that. Kawasaki in third. Great stuff. Very impressive from him, and not about this man. How tough is he? This is wide open, Rutter in the foreground. Kagiyama, the other side, your pole man next to him. Emmett ready for a start, revs are up and they're away pretty cleanly, bit of a moment there for Mason, a slip and slide, more of it back in the pack as well with the independence, but Mason is away cleanly in the end. But it's Emmett that just hangs on, so Sean Emmett leads this race down the hill for the first time up towards Druids, in behind him is Kagiyama fighting for position. Wow, and that was Scott Smart muscling his way through there, just behind number 71, Yukio Kagiyama. Charlie, you know as well as I do, these conditions are very, very tricky, but it's going to change all the way through, unless, of course, it rains, and it's just a gamble on tyres. They're all on wet tyres at the moment. And look at that, Kagiyama slipping and sliding around. Has that let Scott Smart go through? But it is tricky, isn't it? it certainly is, as Scott Smart just takes a punt into that first corner. What's it going to be like? Have another look at this for Griff. Well, that's Yukio Kagiyama lighting that Rizla Suzuki up in about third gear, just spinning up. No track control on these machines, it's all about throttle control. And have, what about the spray, Steve, coming down that back straight there? Yeah, it's difficult. Certainly, these early laps, you get a lot of spray coming up, filling you all in. We heard John and Stuart Hickens off the Hawk Kawasaki team, just talking to the mechanics, what's going on there. They're hoping that Scott Smart's bike runs a bit better this time, but it is looking good at the moment. Tommy Hill doing a fabulous job in there. Yeah, actually, very, very strong. A couple of Yamahas up here at the sharp end of things. That's an improvement. Yeah, they've sorted a few things out. Rob McElney, they've changed some of the... Uh, Engine mapping on these bikes, they change the swinging arm, pivot, one or two little tweaks have certainly helped those bikes out a bit this year. Now Scott Smart looking at it, he looks hungry in there. James Hayden also doing a great job there just behind the Kawasaki on the other Virgin Mobile machine. Yeah, real encouragement for Hayden making a bit of a comeback here, filling in for Steve Plater as we watch them up and over the back of the hill. Huge gap now already for Emmett Kagiyama in the hunt, but have a look at these three duking it out. Scott Smart needs no invitation, just shuts the door there. Scott Smart has a look on the inside, but he's good down as they go down into Graham Hill Bend, and he's going through. And John Reynolds stalking as well while all this is going on. Great pass from Scott Smart. Kagiyama fights back. Hayden wants a piece of this. It's Yamaha, Kawasaki, Suzuki, and Honda in behind. That's as happy a shuffle as you can have. Just hanging on there as Scott Smart trying to get the power on. This is the run up and over the crest of the hill and the long drag down the back straight. Look at that, Reynolds up the inside. Number two, John Reynolds nips inside his teammate Yukio Kagiyama. The two broken collarbone lads out there and Reynolds again. So, so strong on the break into Druid's corner. Uh, there is no caution there with JR, he just wants this championship, he wants to extend his lead and things going well for him because Michael Rutter is in all sorts of problems way, way back. And he's straight past Scott Smart like it didn't matter. Now the conditions are starting to dry about but it's still very, very slippery and you saw there Hayden has a slide but Reynolds gets the grip, comes through. Yeah, nice job there from JR, straight past. Hayden fights back, trying to do something about it, and to pad a kill Ben, but it's not good enough. But this is a great ride from Hayden. Yeah, it is, and look, Hayden there, and it's, wow, John Reynolds really cuts across this, and it's my piece of track on having it. Welcome back to Superbikes. Yeah, that's right. Uh, remember, James Hayden's been out for a bit, hasn't he? And uh, was last riding the Foggy Patronus machine, but back into the British Superbike racing, and JR again gets the grip out of clearways over the start and finish line. It's deja vu. This is race one, replay. JR had carried a little bit too much speed there and had a bit of a job to sort it out, but he's done so. Straight past Sean Emmett, Emmett in behind. 
That's number 12, Dean Thomas, out of the race. He's not had a particularly good weekend. Remember, he had pole position at Thruxton last time around. Hasn't gone well here. Going back to what's going on there with Leon Haslam, and there he is, number 91 again. On the inside, seems to be able to put the pattern around the outside. Very special stuff from the young 21-year-old. Just rides around Kagiyama as though he's not there. Carries the speed. Down through Paddock Hill, Ben, you can see that dry line now. It's really, really pronounced. And whatever it is, this is absolutely working perfectly for Hazard. Let's have another look at that pass. Yeah, he just goes round the outside, and you can watch Kagiyama's bike, 71, wriggling and weaving around. The reason he's doing that, the blocks on those tyres have got overheated, as it's all going on at the front as well now. And when it's got Reynolds back, unbelievable. You can see it's starting to rain again. We've got rain on that camera lens. Uh, and I think Reynolds maybe has a problem there. Sean Emmett, that was pretty brave. Sean Emmett has number 91. Haslam goes through. Reynolds has a problem there. And I think it's the rear tyre. We saw Sean Emmett pointing. Look at that shot there. He's chucking bits of rubber off there. Number two, John Reynolds has some major problems there. But that was impressive of Sean Emmett. There's Kevin Schwantz in the team. Suzuki Gouge keeping an eye on what's going on. He's over having his 40th birthday this weekend. It's all going on. Look at that. The lead change. Leon Haslam on the 999 Ducati, the Pirelli shot machine has just moved into the lead, straight past, and you can see there, the Monster Mob boss is more than a little bit concerned. But there, the renegade boss of Mark Griffiths, he's uh, enjoying what's going on, because I think this was supposed to be a test session for them, but number 91, renegade 999 machine, Pirelli shot, as you said, Charlie, is leading this race, never ever been on the podium before in British Superbike. Well, he's gonna do it, it's starting to rain again, this is the last corner, he's just gonna stroke it around, hanging on to clearways, and the conditions might be going against him, but it doesn't matter now because he's hung it together. And Leon Haslam on the 999 Ducati has taken the win. How about that? Sean Emmett gets second. Good points for Sean Emmett this weekend. Kagiyama up there in third. Yeah, uh, feeling sorry though for John Reynolds. He dropped back, but that is pretty impressive stuff from the young Leon Haslam. The tight's demanding 1.3 mile knockhill circuit is set high in the hills near Edinburgh. As you might expect, weather often plays a part in the racing, and bright sunshine can turn to torrential rain very quickly indeed. In fact, the rain and the lack of drainage is a real issue here, and badly affected yesterday's qualifying. Well, after a weekend of downpours, it's only just stopped raining, but really tricky for tyres. Yeah, you Steve. can see a few choices of different tyres there, as they really have to make some gambles. Ready for a start, we just saw there a burnout by Kagiyama trying to get some heat into the tyres and it looks to have worked, a terrible start for Reynolds, he's been absolutely overwhelmed, but Hayden's just leapt into the lead there, great stuff from him on the Yamaha, down through the bottom end of the circuit for the first time, picking their way through, trying to find something dry, boy that looks slippery and sliding through his teammate. Yeah, number six Gary Mason nips through there on those, look at that drying parts of the circuit and very, very wet in other places. I noticed Mason and uh, Hayden, for that matter, are oh, the faller already, Steve Brogan. He's out on his Yamaha at the early stages. But look at that, number six, Gary Mason, Virgin Mobile Yamaha, and James Hayden in second place. Rob McLean will be jumping through who? How about this? Yamaha, Yamaha, Kawasaki, Kawasaki. That's the lineup we've not seen for a while. And boy, isn't this McGuinness doing a good job as well? Muscling down onto the back of Scott Smart, bite number 88. And Scott Smart, he's got an intermediate front on that bike. He'll be trying oh, to get some heat in there. McGuinness nearly jumps off the number 75 Kawasaki. This race is going to be all about tyre management. And some of these guys that have got front wets on Gary Mason and certainly James Hayden, they'll have to be careful not to overheat the front tyres as Scott Smart goes through. Just slides it in there, puts the bike in tight. Running down the hill now, he's got to hang on to this. And you can see, Steve, already these dry patches opening up. This is going to be really awkward. And that's really interesting. You can see Scott Smart just trying to feed his way through those dry parts. He's got an intermediate front on, and uh, he's really having to work hard at staying on the dry part of the circuit. Now, have a look at this. We've got Sean Emmett down. Yeah, Charlie, down at Taylor's Hairpin. Sean Emmett just had nowhere to go. Tommy Hills fell off the Virgin Mobile. Yamaha and those two are ruled out of this race. Well, Steve, problems for all of our three front runners. Emmett was just getting his championship back on track after two seconds at Brands. 
these two Kawasaki's are really closing down Gary Mason on bike number six. Yeah, now Gary Mason always seems to get really good starts, but he is struggling now. Maybe those that wet front tyres giving him some problems there, and you can see them all tentatively looking for those dry, dry lines. Well, Steve, they're not going to have to look for much longer because there's rain on our camera there. It's getting wet again as we look at Scott Smart literally hop, skipping and jumping past Gary Mason down into the hairpin. Yeah, Scott Smart, I think Charlie got a run out of his locks corner there and really powered that Kawasaki into the lead. And look at this, John McGuinness, the TT lap record holder. He's going for the dry line, also squeezes his way through into second. There is the championship leader, John Reynolds, number two, Rizla Suzuki down in eighth place. There is Michael Rutter, second in the championship, 19th position. Oh, what's going on here? John McGuinness, no, John McGuinness is down and out on the Hawk Kawasaki. He's trying to restart it. Not an easy job in these tricky conditions, but Scott Smart gambled at the beginning and things are looking good for him. That is the end of the race, obviously, there for John McGuinness as he walks away, but apparently staying with the team for the rest of the season. Easy there, James. It'll be the end of your race as well. Bucking and weaving under brakes there as he tries to wash off the speed. Just tapping it out. Oh, no! That's Dean Thomas down. He was in third place. Yeah, the Sendo Ducati man goes out, and I guess that front end just folded on the damp hairpin. That is bad news for him, but that will have helped Gary Mason maybe up into third spot. So Dean Thomas out of this first race. That's exactly where John McGuinness fell. Yeah, I think those front tyres, maybe those front wets have just got overheated. They just get on the damp patch there and away the bike went down. And look how disappointed he is. And there's another worried man. That's Paul Denning keeping an eye on Yukio Kagiyama. He's now up into third, so things are coming right for him. But John Reynolds still a fair way back. Yeah, Reynolds and Rutter. The important thing for JR is that Rutter's back. There's poor old Sean Emmett watching the whole thing from the pit wall. And the Monster Bob boss, Paul Bird, doesn't look that amused either, does he? There we go. Final lap, final quarter coming up for number 88, Scott Smart. And who'd have thought it? The bike was hardly prepared. It was a road bike at the start of the year. But we've already seen Scott Smart steal a win on the last corner from John Reynolds in Ireland. This time he has just ridden the race of his life. It's been pouring between the races, ready for a start once again, but it is soaking out there. Revs are up, Reynolds in the foreground, Kagiyama alongside there, Rutter, everyone away a bit cleanly, a little bit of a touch there, hip and shoulder almost between Rutter there and James Hayden who's muscling for the lead, but it's Kagiyama that takes him down into the first corner, through that river down the bottom of the hill, and down they go, missed everywhere. This is really treacherous. Yeah, it is, and look at that. Oh, wow, number 36, Hayden charges through there. Michael Rutter had a look at having a go at John Reynolds, but it is 71, Yukio Kagiyama that leads this race around this really tricky 1.3 mile circuit, and it's all about just getting it, tiptoeing through those wet parts, getting the drive down and powering out of the corners, but this is good news for Kagiyama. Well, I don't know about tiptoeing, James Hayden there just muscling his way past John Reynolds. Welcome back to the championship. Will be John Reynolds' message when he speaks to him later in the pit lane as we watch James Hayden now washing off the speed and sliding down the inside of Kagiyama, but not close enough. One of the problems here is just visibility, getting the spray up. There's a lot of mud been washed on the circuit. You can see it all running across there, and really, it is so difficult when you're back behind. Kagiyama's the only guy with a clear view. So we've got Suzuki from Yamaha, but not for long. Yamaha almost sliding into first place there. Suzuki, Yamaha, Suzuki, and then Honda, and then the first of the Kawasaki's. We run down the hill, and he does exactly to Kagiyama what he did to his teammate a lap ago, but this time, no panel contact. Yeah, through butchers there, James Hayden very fast. Wow, that's number six, Gary Mason, Virgin Yamaha down at the hairpin. So he's down and out. Look at the state of that bike, a multi-thousand pound motorcycle laying in the dirt. Yeah, dirt and mud everywhere, you can see that. Bit of a run wide there from Kagiyama, I think caught out by the rivulet there across the track, but he's lost a place to his teammate and he's lost a place to Michael Rutter. A safety car. Yeah, that'll be for the accident down at Taylor's hairpin with Gary Mason. 
They must just be clearing up, and Gary Mason down and injured there. It was a high side. I guess he's winded himself quite badly, but it'll be difficult for these guys to keep the tyre temperature up. Yeah, indeed, the safety car still circulating. As we see Gary happily up and walking, leaving the circuit. Safety car in, and we're up for a restart. Up and over the hill, it's Hayden right in behind him. Reynolds, Rutter and Kagiyama. That's your top four over the crest of the hill. Scott Smart and Emmett in behind. Here's Joe, James Hayden's wife. There's Rob McAlay. Can't believe what he's seeing. His bike's out in front. There is Paul Denning, wondering what's going on. Look at that. Hayden has a little glance over his shoulder. It's side by side with Reynolds over the crest of the hill. Also, Rutter fighting defensively, trying to hold off Sean Emmett, but I think Emmett's just got him into the right-hander. Brave stuff there with Emmett going through that wet part, but we also saw the Rizla Suzuki there. It did have the speed, it did have the performance up the hill, but James Hayden riding a very, very defensive race here today. And Sean Emmett on the Ducati now on a potential podium position. He'll be thinking to himself, boy, I could have been doing this in race one as well had I not get tangled up. Well, he does need the points. Now we've got some problems coming up because we've got back markers, so John Reynolds, can he do anything? Anything in these back markers to close on number 36, James Hayden. I don't think back markers are his specialty, actually. He's had all sorts of problems in the past. Look at that, the first man through, 36. Try to keep your eyes on him. There's 36. There's Emmett. Look at that. Emmett's taking a real opportunity here. Just lunges down the inside of JR and picks him off. Reynolds back into third. A whole gaggle of back markers now. They're all in their own race, too. That's fair enough. But everyone's got to weave their way in. As we watch James Hayden running down the back straight for the last time. Just keep it on the black stuff and it's job done. Looking over, finding the water to keep the tyres cool. Yeah, imagine this, the first win for the new R1 Yamaha. And it's looking good. He's just got to keep the front wind down and get over the line. He's going to do it. James Hayden on the Yamaha takes the win. Emin in behind him and some useful points there. For John Reynolds as well. Well, Charlie, I think we'd better get an invite to the Yamaha party tonight. How happy are they? Well, Mrs. Hayden thinks it's quite a good job, and actually, so does Mr. Hayden come to that. At the end of the day, you know, I know it's like I said it kind of this morning, but you know, so many people after losing my job last year sort of think, oh, oh James Hayden's finished or whatever. And this is the most competitive national series in the whole world and probably better than the world championship. And you know, I've just won today and finished second. And you know, I've, it's been the hardest sort of climb back. And you know, I'm back and it's just a massive thanks to my team, you know, my wife, Joe, my family, just you know, everyone around me has kind of you know kept me there. And you know, it's I know I'm going on a bit, but I just feel so thrilled to, to be back. So uh, it's good. Race one of the afternoon of the Think British Superbike Championship at Mallory Park. Two of the experienced men, as we'd expect, on the front row, Rutter and Reynolds. Put some surprises, Steve. Well, Scott Smart, his first ever pole position there on the Hawk Kawasaki. And what about Tommy Hill, number eight from the R6 Cup last year? He's there in second place. OK, revs are up and we are ready for a start. Watch for Kayanari as well on the second row. A much better qualify for him, but a great start there for Tommy Hill. Bike number eight, straight down the middle. Rutter's on the left-hand side, but Smart just sees them all off. Scott Smart on the Kawasaki, shuts the door into Gerrards for the first time, but everyone away clearly filtering through. Tommy Hill, I've got to say, number eight there, just 19 years old from the R6 Cup last year. He is storming around here. Look out for Rutter, number three. He's on the inside now of Hill and JR's there as well. And look at that, Hayden jabs it down the inside. It's all action here at Ed Wieders. James Hayden doing a great job there, getting his way past a pair of Suzuki's and up into fourth place. Ahead of him is teammate Hill. There's Rutter on the black machine and right up the front into the hairpin for the first time. Scott Smart leads. A whole variety of different lines there and it didn't look like the right one for Smart. Almost left the door open. Well, he got away with it, Charlie. He was wide on the hairpin, but he had the inside line for that bus stop corner. So Smart on the Hall Kawasaki comes over the line. That bike, we know it isn't the most powerful out there, but Smart's riding it so well. And there goes Rutter. Oh, he looked very close there, just couldn't quite carry the speed. And in fact, he's balked himself a little bit in the process. So it's still Smart in behind him, Rutter. Then Tommy Hill. Great stuff here from James Hayden as well, staying in touch. But watch out for those Suzuki's, in particular Kagiyama. Look at him bearing down the first of the blue machines on the left side. Yeah, he's in there. Scott Smart just about locked up the rear end. They're trying to slide it in. It didn't work for him, but he's managed to block out Michael Rutter. So Rutter had a good old look there, number three, on the inside, but couldn't make it. Well, there's bags of enthusiasm there for Scott Smart, but I tell you what, he's riding half a distance again, more than everybody else. Yeah, this time Smart keeps it nice and tight. It's really, really slow. First gear, and Hayden 
pushes down the inside of Tommy Hill and just about shoves his teammate out. <laughs> Bit of a hip and shoulder there from James Hayden. Down the inside, makes the point, and I tell you what, look at the momentum that Tommy Hill's lost in the process, Steve. Yeah, that hurt him a lot, didn't it? Because now Kagiyama nips in there into fourth place. So it's smart, Rutter, Hayden, Kagiyama as they go round Gerard's corner, fourth gear, third, fourth gear corner, very, very fast round here. Important to get on the power out of it. But here at this 1.3 mile circuit, there's barely any time to get up real high speeds. Yeah, as soon as they get going, they're stomping on the brakes again, especially through this newer part of the circuit. That really washes some speed off the back straight. Yeah, designed really to slow the bikes down into this, the Dunlop S is here now, but that was the fastest part of the circuit, a long, steppy straight. Now they're much slower. Paul Denning keeping an eye on his two riders, Reynolds and Kagiyama. Well, I tell you what, he looks a little bit severe, and you would be as well, because his man, particularly John Reynolds, the second of the blue bikes, is way back in the pack. And Michael Rutter, the man who's challenging him in the championship, up there in third place. This is going Rutter's way at the moment. It is going Rutter's way. There's Joe, that's James Hayden's misses there. Watch it on, but Rutter really needs a result this weekend to try and claw back. But he's not going to get one because look at that, 71. Kagiyama into Gerard's corner, just jams it down the inside. Well, you've really put the mocks on that, haven't you, Steve? As soon as you give him some encouragement, backwards he slides. Michael Rutter loses a place. He's now in the Suzuki sandwich, and it looks as though John Reynolds, who's almost using a bit of the grass and more to get past is about to pick up the spot he's done it almost no resistance what's going on here? John Reynolds just using his experience really he's been watching what's going on keeping an eye on everything Denning again and the rest of the team watching what's going on from the monitor but John Reynolds really he's just stalking he just keeps an eye on what's going on he's picking his way 30 lap races a long way to go yet through Gerrards one more time Kagiyama up into second position now. James Hayden having to give best into Gerrards and slot in behind him. So it's Kawasaki leads from Suzuki. Then it's Yamaha, then another Suzuki. It's busy at the sharp end. Yeah, and the Virgin Mobile boys keeping an eye on what's going on. And Hayden doing a good job. Remember, he had a win at Knock Hill last time out. The first win they've had all year. Look at this. They're nearly three abreast into Edwin. Oh, and it's Kagiyama. job done. Job done. Just carried the speed through. No problem there. Scott Smart just hugely lost out. He certainly did. He went from first to third in one corner. Kagiyama really has pulled the pin, he's away. Now here's another look at it coming down into the corner. Kagiyama around the outside, but straight away down the inside, there goes James Hayden on the Virgin Yamaha machine. He just jams it right down the inside of Scott Smart and nothing he could do about yeah, it. Yeah, I'll tell you what, those anti-shyness pills that James Hayden's taking are really working, aren't they? Having no problem whatsoever forcing his way through, but nor is John Reynolds straight past James Hayden. Yeah, Reynolds really, as I said, he's the master. He just needs to wait his time, bides his time. He's through there now, he knows he needs points, he wants to extend this lead in the championship now, and he's doing a very good job. We have a faller there, that's Tommy Hill, that's a bad luck for Tommy Hill out of this race. He was riding out of his skin and he almost took pole, he was, oh, major moment there. Wow, geez, Dave, James Hayden came down through Devil's Elbow, just had a bit of a slide on there, the bike got itself in a knot and he just had to roll the throttle off, losing that place to Scott Smart. Look at this again, as he just gets the bike upright, it just gets itself in a huge knot. I don't know if he's got a steering damper problem, but he certainly had a footrest problem because his feet were off of it. Yeah, and a bit of a focus problem as well, and he paid the price for that. Scott Smart sliding through. Now, up the front here, you've got your championship leader, John Reynolds, in second place. In front of him is his teammate, Yukio Kagiyama, and John Reynolds is now making a move. This is even more points, potentially, if he can pull it off into Edwin as smooth as you like. Well, that did look pretty smooth, it looked pretty easy. Will Kagiyama come back? Will there be any team orders? Remember, John Reynolds leads this championship, Kagiyama down in third place. I doubt it very much because the Japanese rider, he wants to win this championship this year and still has the possibility of doing it. And we've seen him take race wins in the process. Now, you tell me, was that too easy, Steve? Well, it did look easy, but then Reynolds, number two there, did get the run out of Gerard's corner. He did have the inside line. Kagiyama will know that Reynolds wants to win and he doesn't take any prisoners. Now, how about this bike number 23? No, it's not Michael Rutter, it's his teammate, Kianari. Now, we have not seen him at the sharp end of this field since the start of the year, way back at Silverstone. Kianari just picks up another place. Yukio Kagiyama, he's going on the wide line past John Reynolds at Caddy, but Reynolds cuts back. He fights very hard, there's one more left right to do. Reynolds fights it, this isn't stage managed. These guys are working flat out for this point, and it's going to go. John Reynolds way down towards the checkered flag and across the stripe, and Reynolds takes it from his teammate. A one-two for Crescent Suzuki, and who's going to get the third spot across the line? So close for Kianari, but Scotty Smart keeps it. Well, how good is that for the Rizla Suzuki team? A one-two, and the nearest competitor to John Reynolds is Michael Rutter, and he was in six.
can only be the front wheel of Michael Rutter. Front row of the grid, but fourth position with it all to do in race two. After seeing the gap between him and John Reynolds open up, we are ready for race two, and it's away. Good start by Reynolds. Pretty good start by Tommy Hill as well. Right-hand side of your screen is the pole sitter, Scott Smart. And once again, straight through, a good start from him. Hill goes with him, so does Reynolds and Rutter. So they're all line astern. And Tommy Hill there, number eight, pretty knocked around after that crash in the first race. Broken rib, apparently, and very, very sore thumb, so he's doing a good job. Third place is the championship leader. John Reynolds has a look down the inside. I think he might have it. He's definitely got the spot from Tommy Hill. Nice work from Reynolds straight up into second place. Now, so important at this early stage for Michael Rutter to go with him. Yeah, Rutter will be trying his best here. As I said before, Michelin tyres, they've probably sorted things out from race one into the hairpin again. Look at those bikes. The front end's jammed down, the rear wheel's up in the air, down into first gear. Then the bike wants to wheelie. It's so busy through this section of the circuit. You've got 200 horsepower and tiny little short corners. It's hard work. Now, here's a bit of moment where they can open up the throttle a bit, back across the stripe, the downhill run into Gerrard's. Look at that, Rutter straight past bike number eight, or is he side by side? Hill doesn't want to yield. Rutter really wants it, he's got the inside line, forceful move. Yeah, Rutter really, he's got that inside line. Hill was moved out on the wide line where all the dirt and rubbish is. It's slippery out there, so he had to give best. So Rutter up into third spot. Look yeah, at talk, this. Yeah, talking about giving best, here comes Reynolds straight through Scott Smart. So he's got one more buffer between him and Rutter. Michael Rutter will be wanting to work his way around. And Paul Denning talking to someone out in the back of the circuit so that the pit boards are up to date. They know exactly Reynolds will be getting... P1, and that is place one. Look at this stuff. It is excellent. Hill still in fourth place. A furious pace, though, Steve. Yeah, really hot pace here at Mallory Park with this new corner put in, Edwina's corner here now. It has slowed it down. This used to be the fastest part coming out of this Gerrard's corner, fourth gear up into fifth, and then it's jamming the brakes on again. We'll look at Rutter again. Has a bit of a look, look at smart. smart. Nice job. So that's put the two front runners front to back, and Scott Smart back in the lead of this race. You have to say, Scott Smart's really come of age now, This uh, having had two wins this year. First one was at Mon Mondello Park, then at Knock Hill. He's really getting that bike going well. Rutter <laughs> takes the outside line. He left the inside line. There's yellow flag, so no overtaking. Hold your positions. Luckiest yellow flag JR's seen for a while. That was very, very helpful indeed. Rutter looked as though he was about to pounce there. Oh, and we have the pace car coming out. That's a safety car flag. Obviously, there's been some... Oh, now we have a red flag. So the race is stopped, they will reform in the positions they crossed the line at last time around. Yeah, we've got an incident up the top of the hill. Yeah, it's uh, Malcolm Ashley, he's crashed out and a uh, suspected broken leg for Malcolm Ashley. So now they'll all line up on the grid in the positions they crossed the line after that first part of the race, and the race will be on aggregate. OK, hope you got your notebooks ready. It gets complicated from here on in, but we have restarted. Now Scott Smart once again on the right-hand side of the screen, but look at that, JR just move forward. He got dropped back a long way, did Scott Smart? Yes, yeah, Scott didn't get away so well this time off of that pole position. There he is, one, two, three, four, fifth position for Smart. Everyone be a bit careful with their clutches, I suspect. These bikes don't like too many drags off the line. But it is John Reynolds' lead, or is it Tommy Hill on the inside? How about that? He is knocked and bashed around, but he's leading this second race. Pushing very hard and leading at least on the road. Not on aggregate, we'll have to add all the times together at the end to see who's the ultimate winner, but at least he's got to make as much hay as he possibly can, get a gap, see if he can make do. Look at that, smart straight through on Michael Rutter. Michael's in a little bit of trouble again. Yeah, I just think that maybe the Michelin people, they've not really been here a lot at Mallory Park, or never before for that matter, in the more recent years, and they're probably struggling for tyre grip and duration. Uh, Reynolds straight through on the inside. This will make it simpler if he leads on the road as well. No doubt then whatsoever who's at the sharp end. Scott Smart almost through there, but Tommy Hill doing a fabulous job on that Yamaha. Yeah, well, it's hard enough riding these bikes right here when you're fully fit, but when you're knocked around and with a broken rib, I just can't imagine the pain he must be in. Smart now has the inside line down towards Gerrard. Yeah, it's got to be job done, but no, it's not because Tommy Hill just carries the speed wide. The beauty of Gerrard is at least you can come in from wide. You can carry a lot of speed there. Yeah, you can. On the bottom of the screen is the aggregate time that are coming up and it is JR leads on aggregate but Scott Smart second on aggregate time and I think in a minute he's going to be second on the road.
Down into Edwinas again, straight past Tommy Hill. In behind him, James Hayden. So you've got a pair of Yamahas, a Kawasaki, and a Suzuki, and then the Honda of Michael Rutter in touch. And watch out for Kagiyama as well, moving up through the field. Yeah, it's all still very bunched up there because Hayden in fourth place on the Virgin Yamaha. He's still not done with, I don't think, but the battle at the front, and they are absolutely neck and neck. Smart switches to the inside. Can he do it? He does. He's got it, just carries the speed straight through there into Ed Wieners and out the other side. Reynolds has proved very fast, though, on this part of the circuit. Through the right-hander and the run up the hill towards the hairpin. Watch for Reynolds to try to get the whole shot. Can he get close enough? No, Smart's carrying enough speed. Just shuts the door nicely. John Reynolds just trying to pick up a place. As we see James Hayden pick up a place as well. Just sliding past his teammate Tommy Hill, bike number eight. Now, Hayden is up into third place, potential podium. Yeah, now Hayden getting better and better as the season goes on on that new R1 Yamaha. We knew how good it was. They just had to get it all fixed up and working nicely together. And look at that, Rutter's getting really poised. Big old bashing and crashing session there at the hairpin. Yeah, the tides come in and he hasn't got his oars yet. They're just all over him. Really, really difficult stuff for Michael Rutter. And the funny thing about it is this is the sort of circuit where you want to fire out of corners easily, and that's where the Honda's been so good. OK, he's just firing his way past Tommy Hill, I think. Well, Tommy Hill's going to make him really work for it, but it's not where you'd expect the Honda to struggle to. I have to say, Michael Rutter looking a little bit cautious there with the grip on that bike. I don't think he's fully happy. Bearing in mind he lives about half a mile away from this track. This is his local circuit. This is where he cut his teeth at racing. So number three, Michael Rutter is not having the sort of day he expected here at Mallory Park. Tommy Hill just dipping it in there behind him, Kagiyama. He's starting to close in tight. Now, here comes Kagiyama. Kagiyama down the inside of bike number eight. Not quite close enough. Tommy Hill just slams the door shut. Shaw rib, what saw rib? Bang straight through. Kianari has picked up a place as a result of all of that. And I think Kagiyama balked himself. A yeah, bit. he did. He got ducked up there good and proper. He tried to make a pass that wasn't going to work. He had to back off, and now everyone's passing him. So Yukio Kagiyama, number 71, going backwards. Look at this, James Hayden on that Yamaha, and he's pressuring John Reynolds, the series leader, and it's side by side. John Reynolds thinks, I'll play a percentage game through this little chicane, not going to get banged into by James Hayden. Hayden muscles his way through. He's really, really forceful today. Yeah, he's going extremely well, it has to be said. That's Rata. Wow, hey, that is all over, really. This championship is not happening for Michael Rutter this year. Into Gerrard's corner, on those bumps, the front end just washed away, and down he went. Well, he got up fine, that's the most important thing. But boy, oh boy, he's got a very short walk home to his house where he lives. Look Looking at this. At tire, he's yeah. lost the block going into the corner. He'll be trailing his brakes into that corner. Down he went, that's fast. That's 110 mile an hour, 120 mile an hour crash. Interestingly, he walked over and had a feel of the tyre to see if the tyre was blown up. But if you've just wrecked a full factory bike, you need some kind of an excuse. That's, that's the one you used to use. Nice job. Poor old Michael Rutter only lives 100 yards from here, but he has got enough time to think about where his championship is going because the man he's trying to beat right there, John Reynolds, is running in second place on the road. But coming under some monstrous pressure from James Hayden on this Yamaha. Hayden finding things out of this Yamaha that nobody else seems to have all year long, including a position on the road from Reynolds. He's finding some gaps into Ed Wieners, so that was a nice, tidy move from... Number 36 there, James Hayden on the R1 Yamaha as he comes through the Dunlop S's. The bike gets wriggling around. They seem to have sorted out the handling problems he had in race one. Reynolds just having a little sniff there. And at the same time, round the outside comes Kianari. What is going on there? Kianari muscles his way past John Reynolds. Back down through Devil's Elbow, this flying left-hander, and past the pit wall one more time. And he's really in close. He tried this manoeuvre before around the outside. This time, he's made it stick. That was impressive. He obviously doesn't realise what happened to his teammate, who went in there probably too fast and hit the bumps and went down. Kianari takes the wide, high, handsome line into Gerrard and makes it stick. James Hayden trying to find a way back past. He's staring down the barrel of a pony. But have a look at that Kianari. That's very, very entertaining stuff, sliding all over the place. When Kianari arrived in the British Superbike Championships, and there's his teammate Michael Rutter watching the screen, but luckily he's OK. But going back to Kianari, when he first arrived over at Silverstone, everyone said, boy, he's exciting to watch. He slides and slithers around. Then he seems to have lost his way a bit, but he's back. There he is, and that style has come with it. Very, very colourful indeed. In through the chicane for the last time. We're on the last lap, I'd remind you. Back down the hill through Devil's Elbow. The checkered flag's out. Head down and across the line. Job done. Scott Smart, right alongside him, Kianari. 
Mum and sister congratulate one another. The 2.1 mile cross circuit is situated in the north of England, near Darlington. It's the first time the championship in its present form has visited the track. It regularly hosts car racing events, and this has led to many riders complaining it being bumpy, and therefore they often struggle to find a good setup. So revs are up, ready for a start in race one. Kagiyama on the left of the screen. Oh, Michael Rudder, that wasn't a good start from him on the Honda. Right on side. Kagiyama looking to hook in 36 there. The red. Virgin Yamaha of Hayden, he's done a very, very good piece of work as well, all filtering through Claveau for the first time cleanly. And another rider there on the Virgin Yamaha machine, number eight, Tommy Hill, from the R6 Cup last year. He got a blinder of a start. So they go through, and you can already start to see the bumps as these machines are bucking and weaving around down the back straight. Now, this is the fastest part of the circuit, around 170 miles an hour. And have a look at that, Kagiyama really starting to lever open a gap now. Defending a little bit, James Hayden, but having a great run on the Yamaha. Smart trying to find a way through. Tower corner for the first time. A very fast left-right flip-flop here. This is a quick part of the circuit. And washing off the speed. Kagiyama hanging in well there. And John Reynolds just backing this group up in fifth position. Yeah, Charlie, this is such a physical, demanding circuit around here, as you well know. The riders just do not get a chance to have a breather anywhere around this 2.1-mile circuit. The bikes are weaving and bucking and moving around. It's just very, very impressive. In through the tight right-hander now. This is all part of the complex. It's as tight as you like. As Steve Gary Mason was telling you, this last corner here, that really tight hairpin, critical to a good lap time. Yeah, trying to get out of here is hard work. They're down to 30 miles an hour out of their first gear, second all the way up to fifth gear down this start and finish line now. And look at Yukio Kagiyama, bike 71, Rizla Suzuki. He is absolutely on it. You saw James Hayden's bike bucking there as he was trying to get the brakes on, trying to tip it into this corner. And we just saw John Reynolds as well pick up a place just moving past that Yamaha up into fourth position through this very fast chicane and onto the back straight again Michael Rudder in part of this as well oh no Steve Plater he's had a rough all year well he's had a terrible year just coming back from that uh, wrist injury but he's out again here at Croft Bearing in mind Kagiyama's injury at the end of last year, coming back, we didn't even think he'd be able to race this year. It's just extraordinary. Look at this, Scott Smart. Oh, that's very physical. Excuse me. John Reynolds tried to take a little bit of that as well. That was actually a Hayden-esque sort of pass, really. It, it was a kind of one. It was a perfect block pass from number 88. Scott Smart, yellow flags are out, so there's no overtaking going on. That will be the accident of Keel Bryce. And uh, just, yeah, down the inside, a real block pass. He wasn't really actually holding the line, but he pushed James Hayden out. Another Virgin Yamaha out, and that's this time Gary Mason. And I'll tell you what, the third one is getting swamped. That was a big pass there from Michael Ryan. Oh, right him, Cowboy! Straight off and through the dirt, James Hayden recovers, but that was very focusing. At what oh, well, now, Rutter goes down the inside of him, but at that point, I'm not sure if Rutter got too close to him or whether it took the line away from James Hayden, but Hayden, what a job he does. He's doing close on 100 miles an hour. Very lucky not to hit those bales. That would have scared him. It did me watching. At number 36 there, James Hayden, lucky to get away with that. Tires will be dirty now. And talk about making a move. Michael Rutter is really on a stormer. Straight past John Reynolds. This is actually points now, big time. He's trying to reel in the points lead against John Reynolds. He's got himself past. Rutter again. He's really, really got that line sorted, Steve. Just lowers the bike in. It looks as though he can put that Honda absolutely anywhere he wants. Kagiyami looks like he's got it. He has a good look over his shoulder now. He has about five bike lengths lead. Rutter surely won't be able to pass him into tower corner this time. So Kagiyama goes down into tower. OK, taps the power on one more time. One more runner. Hey, what's going Whoa! Rather straight through. I don't know what was going on. It's some sort of a problem. I can't believe what I'm seeing. I think Yukio Kagiyama missed a gear, found a neutral. I heard an engine revving at that point, and the front wheel came up there. Yukio Kagiyama cannot believe it. Makes a mistake halfway round the last lap. 
and hands the lead to Michael Rutter. Oh, talk about snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. He was working so hard with Kagiyama. What can he do? Can he fight back? He's trying extra hard now, but he's got to keep it on the black star. Oh, yeah, don't go fall off now in these latter stages. He's doing everything. Will he be able to get down the inside this time around? But no, Rutter's got it covered. OK, Rutter, that's going to be a very, very, very wide Honda for Michael Rutter into this last corner. Just backs Kagiyama up. Kagiyama tries to find room down the inside, but he can't do it. And Michael Rutter across the line takes the win. Kagiyama second, and he's not happy. And Scott Smart third. Unreal. And Kagiyama was on the grass out of this. And Michael Rutter, HM Plant Honda, takes the win here today. So Kagiyama there, right alongside him, Rutter. Then the Yamaha revs are up, ready for a start. That's better for Michael Rudd. A bit of a jump there from Kianari's teammate, but Rudder is away very smoothly. 36 Hayden looking firm in there as well. Who's going to win them? Oh, look at Scott Smart just tries to thread the needle straight through the middle of it. That caught poor old James Hayden out on the Yamaha somewhat. So it's Rutter leading, but not by much. Smart pushing really, really hard. We've got a left-hand part of the chicane zoo and the Kawasaki wow. leads. And Rutter right out of the seat as they came out of the chicane on that Honda on the HM plant machine. But he's managed to hang in there on the inside. He's good on the brakes down into tower corner, but not good enough because there, Yukio Kagiyama into second. Yeah, that was amazing. He sort of unthreaded all of that, didn't he? Got swamped into the first couple of corners, but almost back at the front. Absolutely. But look at this now. Scott Smart, Mallory Park last time, and he was the winner. And there he is, bike 88. Back and over the humps into the rear section of the circuit, coming down towards the pit area. Just look at that sea of people watching these guys. Now, Kagiyama is trying very, very hard. See if he looks as though he's riding. Oh, oh no, he's off! Kagiyama is off, I was just saying, he looked like he was riding too far. Wow, yeah, that was the second gear corner, just as he tapped the power on, I hope he's OK. And you'll see, this is a second gear corner, just as you'll see his right hand tap the throttle, and up and over it goes, that is the, the typical high side. And then, as if he hadn't done enough damage, the bike comes along and smacks him around the head as well. Hopefully he is OK, but he's still rather fragile from that nasty accident he had at Cadwell Park last year. Yukio Kagiyama, I'm glad to see him up and virtually OK. Rutter. Oh, too wide. Yeah, Michael Rutter came into tower corner on the brakes. The rear wheel came up in the air. Bike snapped sideways. He had to let the front brake off. Just about all the braking done with the front brakes on these machines, and he's lost his place. Well, you win some, you lose some. Let's have a look at that. This is where he won against Kagiyama, but he lost a place there. Reynolds has just lost a spot. You've got to stop helping him like this. Michael Rutter just lines him up through the first of those right-handers and carries the speed in. Look at this, he's starting to line him up, Steve. Can he do it, carrying the speed? Yes, Michael Rutter just slides down the inside of Scott Smart and runs wide. Has he held onto it? Yes. Final lap now. He's really got the gap open to where he wants to be. Who'd have thought it? Michael Rutter after the frustration of Mallory Park staring down the barrel of a double win. Absolutely a great day for him, and this is going to reduce the championship. If my maths is right, that brings it back to 50 points now that Michael Rutter, if he wins this race, has over John Reynolds. I hate dealing with your maths, but it's the last corner, and his head is down, his bum is up, and he's going straight across the line. Michael Rutter takes the double at Croft. Scott Smart, second place, and John Reynolds, third. Job done. You can really feel the tension about this championship. Yeah, it's all about this weekend, I think. Can Rutter close that gap down? But we're about to find out. Well, Rutter, the man with momentum, but Reynolds, the man leading. Scott Smart, the man in pole, though, in the front of your picture. Revs are up, ready for a start, and they're away. All the way pretty well. Reynolds, not so much. Great start there for Michael Rutter, though, in the middle. Bike number three, he's through. Tommy Hill, has he gone with him? Yes, he has. So it's Rutter leading up the hill. Hill in behind. And then Kian Hari made a good start there. Great right? start. Charlie, remember at like, the start of this year, those Hondas just couldn't get off the line, but they certainly rectified that because look at that. Rutter, number three lead, and Kian Hari, his teammate, uses the Honda horsepower down over Park straight, and he's up into second. Don't know what they fed those Honda boys for breakfast, but they are flying, and Scott Smart gets that spot back. He started in pole, just saw him there slip back past the Yamaha. So it's two Hondas followed by a Kawasaki and then a Yamaha in the top four. John Reynolds sitting back in sixth there, just taking stock. Yeah. Yeah, John Reynolds didn't get the Rizla Suzuki off the line that well, did he? But he is there and he's in the mix. He just has to ride nicely, keep those points advantage he has over Michael Rutter. And I'm going to have...
have to keep on interrupting you about the astonishing nature of this circuit. It takes my breath away every time I see it. As Rutter goes into this brand new chicane that's just been put in by Jonathan Palmer, circuit owner. This was to slow it down as they come into this section here where Kagayama had his nasty accident last year. Now over the top of the mountain and just check out those wheelies as they come over there. Everything getting airborne, just trying to hang on to it. Look how hard they're working, just weaving back and forth. Michael Rutter settling in there though and his teammate right behind. That's just where he wants his teammate. Absolutely, there's no doubt about it. And look at this now, Rutter, HM Plant Machine, first and second. Scott Smart, who really has dominated qualifying throughout the weekend here. He has to get going a little bit now. And look yeah, at that look hill, at that. hill yeah. down the inside of Smart. Yeah, very, very forceful, takes Smart back pretty much where Scott Smart lined him up. Only a lap or so ago, Dean Thomas still hanging in there in fifth position. And that's out of Barn Corner, another dive down this straight here, pretty fast, about 145 mile an hour before they go back into fourth gear, up the hill to Charlie's, then back another gear to third for this long right-hander. Lovely bit of Honda choreography there, the bikes look terrific. Just running line of stern, Kianari either showing uh, Michael Rutter, the boss, that he could slide through or actually covering the line. You can't get past two Hondas. Side by side, they go up the hill. And that's the fastest part of the circuit, about 165 miles an hour before they break. And look at that! John Reynolds just about barged Scott Smart off the track there. John Reynolds, number two, goes up into fourth. John Reynolds a little bit wide out of Barn Corner. He's lost touch just a touch there as he came out of Barn Corner. Oh, no! That's one of the Suzuki's down. It's Reynolds! John Reynolds, the championship leader, is down and absolutely out of this race. Team boss can't believe it. Paul Denning will be astonished by what he is seeing on the monitor. That is right. John Reynolds, championship leader, who had 50 points lead over Michael Rutter, has crashed out up the top of the circuit there at Charlie's corner. It's a fast corner there. Rutter now leads this. If Rutter stays in front, that's 25 points immediately lost by John Reynolds on his championship lead. That is unbelievable, and, and JR's no slouch. You'll know exactly what that means. As I said at the top of this, he came in with a two-win advantage, John Reynolds, as you say, Steve. If it finishes like this, it's down to one win, 25 points, and that's it, and this is only the first race of the day. Well, Michael Rutter most probably will not know what's going on. Almost certainly the pit crew will try to inform him of that, but this is the man to watch now, 71. Kagiyama there, just up into third place. I'll avenge it for you, John. I'll get up there and get in front of him. I mean, Reynolds will be cheering for him. All of these guys are absolutely knocking spots off each other, aren't they? I mean, Rutter is coming under pretty big pressure and all protection from his teammate. Look at Kagiyama there, real tank slapper. Oh, wide as you like through hall bends there for Kagiyama. Scott Smart seen it, he's dived down the inside. Yeah, you don't have to ask Scott Smart twice, do you? Straight through. Yeah, well, Scott Smart on the Nimble Hawk Kawasaki. We said earlier it's down on power a little bit. Just see if the Suzuki can blast it down the straight. It does normally have the power. Kagiyama goes to the inside as sure and sweet as you like. He goes through. Oh, it's a rider down. Yeah, that's number 56, James Buckingham. And that was the key garage Suzuki because, wow, look at that tank slapper. It is just bucking him around and finally has to give in. Poor old James Buckingham coming out of Mansfield corner, second gear corner. It just flicked him over the high side. Didn't want to let go, did he? Now, John Reynolds sitting there, disconsolate. And that's a Scott Smart. The Kawasaki's in the pits. What is going on there? I can only assume that maybe the chain has jumped off uh, coming over the mountain. I thought he came yeah, in for a drink. Fastest lap of the race for that blue machine, Kagiyama, and no wonder. Look how fast he's closed these guys down. Hey, we've got a red flag. Race stopped. That's Steve Plater. Yeah, that's Steve, yeah, Steve Plater down from the Virgin Mobile machine. That's uh, Hall Benz, I think. What happened there? Wow. As he, yeah, coming into Hall Benz, boy, he's hit those tyres pretty hard. So that's Rutter takes the win. So he goes back a lap. Michael Rutter, that's three wins on the trot for him now. And that means one win gap between Michael Rutter and the championship leader, John Reynolds. There's Mrs. Rutter there, celebrating, of course.
the early stages, but I reckon not a bad one. Threatening clouds all around, threatening clouds out the back of the circuit. Burnouts to try to get heat in the tyres, but we're uh, away for a race anyway. They're off, and once again, Michael Rutter straight out of the blocks and into the lead. This time, though, Kagiyama's trying to go with him, almost does so. Well, Rutter really needs to make hay while the sun is shining, and he hasn't already because Kagiyama's gone through, but Rutter, with those four wets, he's going to have to be fast in the early stages if he's going to do anything. But, Steve, take me through this. I mean, there's a dry line already into Turn 1, there was dry track. I'm, I'm baffled. Look, look at it there. Well, absolutely, you're right, Charlie, that is a dry line, and those wet tyres will only last two or three laps. They'll just overheat unless it starts to rain again. And there goes Scott Smart through into second place. We know he's got intermediate tyres on. And James Hayden in third place. Now, I think Hayden's got a full wet front on, intermediate rear. That just depends on how wet it is underneath the trees. There's McGuinness going through, number 44 on the Hawk Kawasaki. Yeah, McGuinness having a good run there in front of those two Hondas. Out in front, though, Kakuyama, he's just gone. And Michael Rutter, three. Remember, the race winner in race one, he is in trouble already in these drying conditions. I don't know whether he was just waving his teammate through there, but he's uh, gone through, nevertheless, Kianari. So I guess Rutter can follow Kianari around and see what his tyres are working like, because they've got the same combination. Rutter just seeds another place. Yeah, Rutter looks to me like he's touring now, so he's going to be on a completely dry track on wet tyres. It is just impossible to ride these machines. There's a bloke we haven't seen much of this weekend. Sean Emmett there on the Ducati, moving up through the field. Interesting, yeah, but there's a few spots of rain on that lens there. Now, how about this? Maybe Michael Rutter is hoping it's going to pour down, but unfortunately now, Kianari, look at him, number 23 there, sliding the bike in, he's got too deep into there, there goes number five, Sean Emmett, on the Monster Mob machine up the inside. This is good news for, for Sean Emmett, and he's good in these tricky conditions. Yukio looking over his shoulder, there's no one to see. Oh, no. That's Rutter, Rutter in the pits now, he's putting a, a slick rear tyre in, but that'll be a waste of time if he's still got the wet front in. It's no good having grip at the back and knock at, not at the front. But, yeah, you're right, Charlie, John Reynolds, looking a little cautious, I have to say, because I think they're on the same tyres, and he's a long way back, John Reynolds, from his teammate Kagiyama leading this race. He's fell off in race one, he doesn't want to do it in race two, I'm sure. Well, Michael Rutter has done him the most enormous favour, taking a whole race win out of him, courtesy of race one. Now, he's nowhere. And there is Paul Denny keeping an eye on the monitors. He'll be pleased for Kagiyama, but he'll be a little disappointed that John Reynolds is that far back. Rutter goes back out, slick rear, and he's a lap down now as Michael Rutter goes out, but he's kept that full wet on the front. Takes a long time to change the front tyre, that's why they didn't bother doing it. Ah, oh, the frustration before on Michael Rutter. Elation only a moment ago, winning a race with the championship leader not finishing, and now this. Awful stuff. Now, Scott Smart, he's closed that gap down a little bit. Bike 88, Scott Smart, Hawk Kawasaki, a couple of seconds back on Yukio Kagiyama as they come around. You can see that dry line, but it, it's just a narrow line. I can't begin to tell you how awkward it is to ride one of these machines on that little strip of tarmac that's dry there. You make a small mistake and run wide and you're down. You could be describing the whole circuit, actually. It's well, so I was to say, when I was riding around on the Yamaha, the track seemed narrow enough without it being wet. OK, so there goes Kagiyama, your race leader. Scott Smart behind, then Hayden Emmett Richards. That's your top five. Now, this is interesting. Here's John Reynolds, the championship leader, just moving up into eighth place, or is he? He's trying to get past Kianari, Michael Rutter's teammate, and get eighth spot, but he's a long way down. Wow, and number two there, John Reynolds on the Rizzo Suzuki. Tried to get through, went wide. That was what I was saying about running off of line. If you get on the damn part, he knows he does not need to fall down. That's Gary Mason out, number six there. Gary Mason on the Virgin mobile machine, he's pulled out, I suspect, the wrong tyre choice. Oh, oh, dear me, keep it nice, Kagiyama. Yukio. Yukio, do not go and fall off here again. Michael Rutter, he's calling it a day. It's just, it's just too hard. And this is why, because this is a replay of what's going on. You can see how slow Michael Rutter's going. There goes the race leader, Yukio Kagiyama, to lap him. Paul Denning there, the Suzuki race team boss. Having mixed feelings, I guess. Good for Kagiyama, but his star, John Reynolds, is back there in eighth. And we look there at Glenn Richards on the Kawasaki. That's the battle for fourth, just getting past Emmett. And remember, I said at the start, Richards is on slicks front and back. They'll be the right time, but it's spinning with rain. Look at that, rain again falling. I hope there's not too much for Richards' sake. There is the team boss of Hawk Kawasaki, Stuart Hicken. 
keeping an eye on what's going on. As we watch Richard just slide down the inside, I'd remind you this is the battle for a podium. Moving up into third place, Glenn Richards just displacing Hayden, who runs a bit deep there. Oh, very, very oh, deep. Oh. Hayden, 36 here on the grass. Be careful, James, it'll spin you off. There's the last lap flag, pit boards are coming out, and this is for the final podium spot. And look at that, Emmett makes a lunge, he's seen the flag, he knows what it means, he can do with some luck, but Thomas is going with him, 999 versus 998, and don't ride off Glenn Richards yet, although he must, he must be weakening. I think he is weakening, you can see Emmett with that intermediate rear tyre, the bike was squirming around, this is going to be a battle, we've got half a lap to go for this final podium place, and at the moment it's the Monster Mop Sheet machine that leads Dean Thomas on the Sendo Ducati behind, battle of the Ducatis here. Yeah, Thomas would sorely love to get himself on the podium, he's qualified better than he's raced all year, and he's pushing very, very hard. But at the same time, Sean Emmett, boy, oh boy, he needs a result. Up at the front, this guy's going to get a result. He's just absolutely stomped the field as Kagiyama. What a victory this will be for Yukio Kagiyama. As I said, he nearly lost his life here at Cattle Park. He's beaten the circuit, the circuit that nearly beat him. He runs wide, what's he doing? Oh, he's ready to pull a wheelie. Well, he's got all the time in the world, has a casual look over his shoulder, and across the line he comes. Yukio wins. What a result there for the Rizla Suzuki team. Scott Smart, he comes home in second place, but this is the battle for third, and he's down to the hairpin, two more corners to go, and it looks like Emmett's got it. Yeah, working very, very hard as Thomas on that older machine. What can he do? He's fast running out of time. Emmett wants a podium. Thomas is desperate for a podium, but it's going to be Sean Emmett on the Monster Mob machine across the line. And number 23, they're just about to be lapped, and he was lapped by the leaders. That was Kianari, Rutter's teammate. What a race, and the championship stood on its ear, as Yukio does a poignant burnout. Really. Yeah, and it's a significant spot. That's the place where he came close to losing his life here at Cadwell Park last year, and he's leaving his mark at Cadwell, and he's certainly beaten the track here today. What a tremendous result. Not so for this man, Tommy Hill, he crashed out right at the end. But the R6 Championship was won here at Cabell Park today by Richard Wren. He will join the Virgin Yamaha team next season. So, enormous congratulations to Yugo Kageyama. It's an emotional victory for him. And the crowd sure get the significance. <laughs> yeah, this circuit is a much special memory circuit, but memory, good memory. Yeah, thank you very much for everybody, and uh, much happy for English fans. Much excited now. Yeah, and they're happy for you too, Yukio. This championship's going right down to the wire. Well, down on the grid for race one, and this is the kind of weather that Messrs Reynolds and Rutter really don't like at all. Sunshine and a bit of rain, grey skies and blue skies. Who knows what's going to happen weather-wise, all very unpredictable. But this is the front row of the grid. Michael Rutter, Dean Thomas, John Reynolds and Sean Emmett. And doesn't John Reynolds look really quite nervous there? He knows that the championship is oh so close at the moment. Always time for a little smile and a wink, though, from the former champion. So let's go to the commentary team of Charlie Cox and Steve Parrish. Well, as they get ready for this, and Scott Smart right at the back of the grid, he had problems in qualifying. OK, ribs are up, ready for a start. Rutter in the foreground, not a bad start from him. Pretty good start there from John Reynolds as well, but look up the inside there. Bike number four, the Yamaha. Steve Plater on the Yamaha looks as though he's leading through the first turn. Yes, he is. Filtering down towards the Cascades for the first time. Everyone away pretty smoothly. Have a look at that. Yamaha leads. Reynolds in behind. Yeah, this is a stunning start from Steve Plater, number four, there on the Virgin Yamaha machine. And I notice Gary Mason in there as well. So good start from him. But look at this. Championship leader, John Reynolds. Ah, nice stuff. Down through that extremely fast left hander there, Island Bend. And then down into Shell, this very, very tight banked loop that runs us back up the hill. And Michael Rutter having a look, he's there right behind Gary Mason, so Rutter's well aware that he doesn't need to let this man, number two, on the Rizla Suzuki, John Reynolds get away. Rutter, number three, they're in fourth. Where is Kagiyama? John Reynolds, his teammate, he won here last time out. Yeah, got quite stuck. There he is now, just in the background behind the Kawasaki, just coming across the stripe for the first time. 
And poor old Scott Smart, he's way, way back because he had that problem. He never made it out onto the sighting lap, so he had to start number 88 at the back. But there's his teammate, Glenn Richards, doing good. And James Hayden right tucked in behind him on the other Virgin mobile machine. Four of those bikes out there in this race. They're really chucking a lot at it in this meeting. Yeah, they're chucking him at the right end of the field as well. Very good showing from the Yamaha. In through Island again, that was very, very close. Oh, that was Steve Plater, and Rutter goes through now at Shell Oil's corner now. So, Rutter number three, up into third place. Kagiyama has just passed Sean Emmett there as well, so he's a man on the move. Emmett having a strong showing there, Steve. Yeah, and uh, as you rightly say, Kagiyama coming through. They really got held up at the start there. Got him. Yeah, Rutter goes through there. So, down into that... Old Hall corner, Michael Rutter up into second place. Rob McElney, the boss of the Virgin Mobile, set up, keeping an eye on what's going on. Kagiyama is on an absolute charge. He is indeed. Whoa, that was very focusing indeed. Carried too much speed in, ran him wide. Yeah, and really did mess up the line there of poor old Gary Mason. He got washed right out to the edge of the track. Here we go, down into Lodge Corner. Hard on the brakes, he can't stop it, he runs wide. Mason, number six, gets washed out to the outside. He's on the dirty part of the track and has lost a huge amount of time. Yeah, Gary Mason, they're very lucky not to run completely wide and out onto the gravel. Now, Kagiyama, what can he do about Sean Emmett? Bike number five, Sean Emmett, the 999 Ducati, in behind in the blue machine, Kagiyama. And I'd remind you, Kagiyama's teammate is way up the pointy end all on his own. Yeah, and Lodge, sir, here he goes down at Lodge Corner again. This time a bit of a cleaner move. Sean Emmett drops back behind him. You'll see the number 71, Rizla Suzuki, has the horsepower. He stretches away one of the faster parts of the circuit. Again, about 165 miles now before they get on the brakes down into third gear for this the old hall corner. The current champion here, he's still injured at the moment, but hoping to be back at the GPs. Race leader up, hand up there. Putting yeah. his hand up as the race leader. And that spot's on the camera, you can see there, it's starting to rain. There it is, red flag. So the rain is falling here at Alton Park in the first race. We haven't completed two thirds distance, it will be a two part race. Well, tyre covers unveiling a slick tyre there. That's the choice everyone's making, and it's the choice that Michael Rutter's making, obviously following everyone else after mistakes made at Cadwell Park. First part of the race over 10 laps, that's done. John Reynolds has a healthy lead over four seconds. The remainder of the race will be over eight laps and decided on an aggregate score. Let's go over to our commentary team of Charlie Cox and Steve Parrish. Well, it's uh, dried out again, so even though the race was stopped for rain, it is slick tyres, the track is dry. Revs are up again, ready for a start, and they are away once more. Reynolds to the right on the blue machine. Rutter, bike number three, looks as though he's going to lead in first, but no, Reynolds has got the drag. This time, a much better start from Kagiyama. He's up there in the thick of it as well. So John Reynolds, the man chasing the championship, is leading. Yeah, and Rutter got away a lot better this time, so it's pretty much as it was when that race was stopped. Of course, those grid positions were as they crossed the line from that, so away they go, and it's Rutter right behind John Reynolds, and this is the championship, first and second. Kagiyama trying everything he can. Yeah, nice. Nice for John Reynolds there, his teammate riding shotgun, running in a bit of interference there with Michael Rutter. Through the fast island bend once more. Kagiyama, Emmett, Emmett on the Ducati. Slides through, this is a very forceful ride from him. Very strong there from number five, Sean Emmett. This is the move, down on the brakes, into Shell Oil's corner, it's a second gear corner. Runs a little bit wide, but it doesn't matter because he shoves Kagiyama out wide. So that was the battle for third place, but this is the battle for first and second, but we know number two. John Reynolds, Rizla Suzuki, has a four-second advantage over Michael Rutter. So Rutter, if he wants to win this race, has to pass Reynolds and pull away by more than four seconds, and we don't see that happening. Well, he's trying to make a pass now, at least. Down into the right-hander, and he makes it stick. Reynolds obviously presenting his play, I guess, Steve. Yeah, and John Reynolds knows what's going on. This is the move. Number three, Michael Rutter on the HM plant, Honda down the inside, but John Reynolds is well aware that Rutter has to escape more than four seconds before he's going to win this race. So John Reynolds will be hanging in there. But look at that, number five, Sean Emmett, really pushing hard because he's still battling for third. Well, as you said at the start of the show, it's maybe easier to follow than lead, and that's exactly what John Reynolds can do now, just stalk around. But have a look at Sean Emmett. Forgetting the aggregate time, he's actually on fire. Yeah, there he goes, number five, Sean Emmett, 999 Ducati goes through, but the battle is, of course, as they cross the line now, number two, John Reynolds leads on aggregate, second, Michael Rutter, third, who's leading on the road, but the real battle for third place is between number five, Sean Emmett, and Kagiyama, number 71. Kagiyama needs to be right behind Emmett if he wants to take that final third spot. What a great scrap these two are having, it's all getting too difficult for JR, I think he just doesn't want to get tangled up, running around in third, on the road, but first, Right behind him, Kagiyama. 
Now, number two, John Reynolds, the last thing he needs to do is to get tangled up with Sean Everett, but he's dived through again. Brave move, considering he knows he's got this race pretty much in the bag because of that aggregate, but he'll be keen to get away from Sean Emmy, I reckon. Yeah, I guess he doesn't want to get caught up behind him and just give Michael Rutter that slim chance that he could actually eke out the advantage. This is very fast stuff. Yeah, it is, and I think he used the power of that Rizla Suzuki over the 999 down the straight there, but it was brave on the inside. But I know John Reynolds will be talking to himself in his helmet. He said, will you keep out of my way? Here he comes again, once more with feeling. Emmett back through. I've cut it out, Sean. Yeah, I mean, John knows what this championship is all about, but Emmett's keen to get away from Kagiyama. We know that that's the final spot on the podium between number five, Sean Emmett and Kagiyama, there fourth on the road. Interesting, though, Steve, he's had such a difficult year, Emmett, and yet it's showing really strongly now. He had a terrible time here at Alton Park last time. Look at this, Reynolds again on the inside, but just gets through. Yeah, that's a one-lane to gain, that. Line of stern, Kagiyama sitting back and forth, thinking, I don't know what's going on here, but the boss might have a problem. So there we go, and it is as Rutter leads the race on the road. He's second actually in the race, and the championship now, if it stays this way, Reynolds will extend his advantage. This is just what John Reynolds needs, maximum points. Michael Rutter can do some damage limitation there by getting a second place, but as you say, it's still going to open it up. But down into the last corner for the last time in this first race, and once again, Emmett down the inside. He just doesn't know when to stop. Up and over the stripe. So across the line, it's Rutter from Emmett, from Reynolds, but Reynolds, your race winner. Well, that was a great ride there. Paul Denning knows it, a win for John Reynolds, extending his lead from 33 to 38 points over that man, number three, Michael Rutter. Boy, he had to work for it. Yeah, very strong ride, I think, there from John Reynolds, considering what was in. There he is, number 17, James Ellison takes the Privateers' Cup. He's won the championship this year on the Gentine Racing Yamaha R1. Michael Rutter, your pole sitter. This is real pressure time. Only a win will do for him now. Ready for the second race of the day. As you can hear, the revs are up and we're ready for a start. Rutter on the outside. Sean Evan on the nearest side to us. Down into the first corner and everyone away pretty cleanly. A good start there from Reynolds. Up the inside, Rutter just makes a stick. Kagiyama goes with him. And Yukio Kagiyama on the outside of John Reynolds being keen not to wipe him out for this championship hunt that Reynolds is after. Look at that, number 17, the Privateers Cup champion, James Ellison, sitting there right in the front bunch. There is Tails obviously up, having just banked his championship win for the year in the Privateers. Down the back straight now, Michael Rutter, bike number three, he's in the lead. Right behind him, the championship leader, John Reynolds, in second place. Through this ferociously fast left-hander. Dean Thomas, look at that. Dean Thomas goes down into third place. Pretty forceful oh, stuff. Boy. Almost getting hammered there by number 71, Yukio Kagiyama. James Ellison still in there, right on the back of Kagiyama, number 17, with that yellow number plate. Oh, we have a faller down there. That's uh, John McGuinness. John McGuinness is out on the Hawk. Kawasaki is number two. Reynolds charges through to the lead. Very firm, but I think he overclubbed it. Yeah, he certainly did. Carried too much speed in and brothers cut back on it. Yeah, look at Kagiyama as well, number 71. He's gone round the outside of Dean Thomas, slotted himself up into third place. Dean Thomas' bike there looking a little bit unstable. Just as Dean Thomas got on the brakes, it's wriggling around the flags, and now that's Gary Mason out, Virgin Yamaha. That's one of the bikes, the Yamaha's out of this race early on. Yeah, that's a mechanical failure, it's not a crash. Bad luck for Mason, the Yamaha's been showing strongly this weekend. Now, back at the front, this is exactly what Michael Rutter needs. He can't have less than this, he's got to win this race. Reynolds is stalking him. Very, very close, down into Old Hall Corner. Reynolds tries to line him up again, and this time does he make it stick. Rutter fights back. Yeah, they're neck and neck down the avenue towards Cascades. Oh. Who is going to be the braver down here? And it is Michael Rutter, HM Plant Honda. Kagiyama has a good old look across. Is he riding shotgun? Is he trying Down to help him? comes it? Reynolds again into the chicane. Oh, boy, that was firm. Just stuffs it through there. Up and over the hill one more time. Very, very fast part of the circuit. A huge braking tool. Look at this. Kagiyama back wheel just flipping off the ground. Muscles through. Can he hang on to it? Yes, he does. Just what JR ordered. And he's done a really good job of actually slowing Michael Rutter down as they went through his, his corner there. Scott Smart, oh, unfortunately for him, out of this race, and that's not good for his third place in the championship, because Kagiyama currently in second. Yeah, no, he's had a really difficult weekend, hasn't he? Starting off the back of the grid in race one. A few spots of rain I just saw on the lens of our camera. Kagiyama Suzuki getting itself in all sorts of knots. 
Rutter has lined him up here. He's got the speed. Does he take it? Yes, he does. Through old hall corner. The run back down the hill. But look, Reynolds has gone, Steve. It's worked really well for John Reynolds because Kagiyama and Michael Rutter have been tripping over one another and really that slowed Rutter down. Now, would you, if you're Michael Rutter, want you go Kagiyama all over your back wheel? Nori Haga there, world superbike rider. Watching his mate Kagiyama running around chasing Michael Rutter. Really is a world class field, this. It is. We saw a shaky burn here as well. And Hitler, remember, he won the Privateers Cup here a few years back, then won this championship last year. It's been such a launch pad for shaky burn, this thing, pretty soon by championship. And it's starting to look like a launch pad for John Reynolds' third championship as he comes across the line to take the double here at Alton Park. Michael Rutter in second place and Kagiyama third. Just what the doctor ordered for the championship hunt. John Reynolds now extends his lead to 43 points over Rutter and Kagiyama has got a stronger grip on third. Donington Park is this veteran. Exciting times for his Rizla Suzuki team boss, Paul Denning. Although Mr. Denning has been beyond now, very focused, very nervous. John Reynolds, eighth place or better, will seal the championship for him here today. Let's go to the commentary team of Charlie Cox and Steve Parrish. Well, there's no doubt it will be a tough race for John Reynolds. He's just got to keep that bike going around the circuit. And problems there for his teammate. That is Kagiyama. He had an electrical problem on the warm-up lap and has to start from the back of the grid. OK, revs are up. There's the man. And they're off, not a bad start from JR, pretty good start from Kianari in front, heading down towards Redgate for the first time. Bike 23, that's Kianari. Hooks in in front of his teammate, JR wants to go with him. That's the stuff, you don't want to be mucking around, get in there and race. Rutter is in front, Reynolds right behind, and Richards and Scott Smart. Pair of Kawasaki's there, either side of the champion to be. Yeah, look at that, it was actually... Oh, oh. No, big fall, big fall, Steve. Kieran Clark, that's Kieran Clark on the Apple Yard Yamaha, and that looks to me like it's Paul Brown on the ETI Ducati. He had to take avoiding action at Crater Curve. That is fast and almost certainly a cold tyre. Boy, he's still having an excursion off Clark straight across the grass. Have a look. Yeah, well, we don't get a complete shot of that, but that oh. is a massive, massive high side to what that looked like to me. Kieran Clark on that Apple Yard Yamaha goes down. Bits of Yamaha flying everywhere. Poor old Paul Brown had nowhere to go across the grass. That will be slippery. Just be careful. You can see him stood up on the footrest, trying to keep that bike upright. Right, now we've got a safety car out now. Safety car coming out. Everyone will bunch up. And there he is. Luckily, number 74, Kieran Clark, is up and OK. Yeah, that's good to see. Poor old Kieran. I mean, he was actually doing pretty well way up in the hunt. Anyway, we're about to restart. Safety car pulls in. We've got a rolling start. As you can see, Rutter looks like he's carried some momentum. His teammate is still in front. Back across the strike, coming down into red gate again. Michael Rutter, bike number three. Emmett looks to go with him. Kianari slams the door shut. Yeah, number five, Sean Emmett on the Monster Bob. Ducati slots himself into third place now. Remember, this is not aggregate. This is how the race is run. This is how they'll finish. So it is at the moment. Number 23, Ryuchi Kianari leads his teammate Michael Rutter on the HM plant on the Fireblades. Oh, John Reynolds getting a little bit beaten up there. Glenn Richards just slides through behind his teammate Scott Smart. So the two Kawasaki's in front of John Reynolds. But as we sit here on the track, this will do nicely. Absolutely. We heard from Craig. John Reynolds just has to bring that Rizla Suzuki home in eighth or better. And at the moment, he's looking good. He'll let things settle down, I'm sure. It'll be a tough race, as I said, for John Reynolds. But he is a professional. But see, the hardest thing in the world is actually to ride within yourself or beneath the 100%. It's so easy to get it wrong then, isn't it? Uh, yeah, that is the problem. He's got Dean Thomas behind him, number 12. You can see behind John Reynolds. And absolutely, Charlie, you've just got to kind of ride the race. But you're saying to yourself, and there's a move there. Glenn Richards goes past Scott Smart. But you've just got to say to yourself, be smooth, be careful. Don't get in a big fight with anyone out on the track. But run good. Well, he's he doing is. it. Though. He's up for a fight. Look at that. John Reynolds takes both the Kawasaki's down through the Melbourne loop under brakes. He's obviously been listening to you, mate. Absolutely. So Reynolds there now, right behind number five, Sean Emmett, on the Ducati, and those Kawasaki's are ganging up on him as they go through the Goddard's left-hander out to the start and finish straight. They come out of their second gear, third, fourth, up into fifth gear, and there's the boys watching where their gold medals. There's Shelley, John Reynolds' his wife, and she looks nervous. Well, we're all holding our breath watching John Reynolds tippy-toeing around. This is the battle for third, but we just saw a moment ago Kianari, the new lap record, the heel is absolutely on fire the man's flying and Reynolds is flying as well back down inside 
Yeah, Reynolds now up into third place. And there's his, uh, oh my goodness, Kagiyama, who was coming from the back of the grid, pushing a bit too hard. Number 71 had gone the grass trials riding. Looks like a little scene from the sound of music, doesn't it? Kagiyama just sliding across the grass. Nice stuff and sort of hangs onto it. That's the main thing. Up and through Copperson down the back straight. Reynolds in front of this lot. The pair of Kawasaki's in behind Ebbett. A much improved Sean Ebbett. That was a belter qualifier. Yeah, there. Sean Ebbett knows it's uh, contract signing time. He wants to get himself a ride for next year. So there he goes. Number 75, Glenn Richards goes through. Now, at the moment, this is looking quite good for Scott Smart. Remember the battle for the third place in the championship between Kagiyama and him. And Kagiyama, we know, is at the back. Yeah, well, he's off playing in the grass. And meantime, Scott Smart is picking up points. Muscles back past his teammate. This all looks like uh, good firm fun. as we look at Scott Smart trying to probe around the outside there of Sean Emmett on the Ducati, then cuts back in deep for the run up the hill, but uh, very good drive for the Ducati up the hill. Yeah, I think the Ducati we've seen this year just doesn't have the punch out of the corners. It was obviously uh, the title winning bike for many, many years, the Ducati, but the 999 this year has struggled a bit against those big four-cylinder machines, but not much in performance difference here. I'd say the Ducati may be slightly more agile, but we're watching Sean Emmett back on form. Yeah, but have a look at this. Scott Smart up the inside, and he gets through, even though it looked as though Emmett got the better drive out of Melbourne. Yeah, well, that's what we're saying. These four-cylinder bikes have just moved along a huge amount, Charlie, haven't they? Yeah, that was the real issue at the start of the season, wasn't it, Steve? These things just spinning up all over the place. And Scott Smart tries to take the long way around through the S's there. That'll never work. No, and that was Emmett really good on the brakes, late on the brakes on the 999, up and over the top of the hill, down towards the Melbourne loop. Who's going to get it this time? Smart on the outside, I'd say. Emmett has the proper line nowhere for Scott Smart to go nice block pass there for Emmett now it's a drag back up to Goddard's yeah he really made that Ducati very wide that time now into Goddard's the left-hander leading onto the pit straight oh Emmett's carried a bit too much speed there it looks like he's running wide this is the drag back down the pit straight the boss is watching yeah Paul Bird there keeping an eye but what about Kianari eh? yeah I mean, what, what's this all about Steve I mean, in the middle of the year his slump was so bad you could have timed his laps with a calendar now look at a huge gap yeah, you're right, Charlie. He started off so strong, didn't he, at Silverstone? Everyone was worried about him for the championship. Well, certainly his teammate Michael Rutter was. Had that problem in the middle of the year. Went, went back to Japan, sorted his head out. Michelin's came back with some tyres that suited him and the HM plant Honda. And now he is virtually unbeaten. But what about that for John Reynolds, though? OK, JR fans, hold your breath. We're on the last lap now. He's inside the Magic 8 in the top eight. Enough to be the 2004 Think British Superbike champion. Oh, this is murder, Steve. Yeah, it is, but John Reynolds is such a professional. He really has ridden a perfect race. New helmet design, I noticed, this weekend. Paul Denning really doesn't know what to think. He's been through this before, but it's only half a lap to go. Remember 2000, Paul Denning, he is at the moment, I'm sure. He won't even want to watch. This was the moment, this was the spot, wasn't it, where it all let go. It was for that uh, untimely engine blower of Chris Walker's, but Chris Walker had six laps to go. John Reynolds now has half a lap to go. I bet he's shifting early. He's not stressing that engine. He'll be treating that with so much caution and care. Three corners to go, JR, and you are the champion. This is agony for Paul Denning and the team. Through the chicane, two corners to go. Down the hill towards the Melbourne Loop. Break early here, so easy for the front to fold. What's he thinking? He is thinking now, John Reynolds will be thinking, I have done it for the third time. And for Suzuki, Paul Denning really has always wanted to win this championship for Suzuki. John Reynolds is going to deliver it. OK, one corner to go. He can pick up the bike and jog across the line from here. Round Goddard's corner for the last time as the number two plate holder in the British Superbike Championship because John Reynolds is the Think 2004 champion. Oh, and all the excitement, I forgot to tell you, Kianari won and Rutter was second. Outstanding. And there you go, ex-sign writer John Reynolds doesn't have to get his paintbrushes out. There's the number one plate been stuck on. And as Paul Denning, the Suzuki boss, lays the ghost of 2000 to rest, we congratulate Rio Kio for winning in such fine form. And let's spare a thought as well for Michael Rutter. Rode really hard, you cannot have a championship without riders of that calibre to push so hard. So there's the final standings. Kianari, Rutter, Reynolds gets a podium as well. But look at that, Scott Smart, fourth place. Importantly, Kagiyama, 14th place. So that blows wide open, that battle for third. Let's have a look at it now. Reynolds, our winner, of course. Rutter, safely the runner-up. Kagiyama and Smart, the battle for third, really close. 
Well done, JR. Three championship wins, Steve. I mean, he's earned his place in history. Well, he's such a tenacious character. At 39.99 recurring, JR is still very hungry for wins. I'd like to introduce you to the 2004 British Superbike Champion. Well, John, you just heard it announced, but I'm sure it's still hard to get used to it. The 2004 British Superbike Champion. Have to ask it, how does it feel? Oh, it feels absolutely incredible. Yeah, I'm so, so relieved. It's been such a long week, really, since uh, Alton Park last weekend. I've not really slept, to be quite honest with you, running over the scenarios that could happen and possibly will happen. And um, I just needed to get my head down, and that's exactly what I did. It's your third championship. How does it compare to the others? No difference in any other way. I mean, every championship's always been a hard-fought championship, and it's always fantastic to come away with that because every team that wins a championship really does deserve it. And uh, I just feel that, uh, you know, things that this team's gone through this year, one thing or another, it, as I've said it before, it's just inspiring. And I'm just, you know, I'm so pleased for Paul, so pleased for his dad, the family, the Rizla Suzuki, and the team in general because if you, if you don't see behind the scenes, you don't really realise what's going off, but it, it is one massive family and uh, you have to pull hard and work hard together to to achieve what we have done today you're always so self-effacing maybe it's a time to be thankful for yourself and and, and be pleased with yourself it's a great achievement thank you uh, yeah it is there's no doubt about it because you know there's some world-class riders out there and uh, it really has been hard and i've worked my socks off all year long you know and of course but at the end of the day the rider's only as good as the team around him and uh, you know i'm the british champion and i've got a the best team so there you go OK, on the grid for race two, everything's set to go. The championship has been decided, and Michael Rutter is now in second place. I'm going to try and track him down there. He's over-talking to Sean Emmett. Neither of them sharing the spoils at the moment, and I'll try and grab him for just a moment. Michael, can I just grab you for a quick second? What are your thoughts now on the grid? Final race of the season, championship gone, second place secured. Uh, just I wanted to go and win the, like those last two races, you know, to at least try and beat John on race wins, but... Uh, Obviously now all we can do is go and match him, so I want to try and beat my teammate. He's just uh, he's on fire today, so you know um, I think he's going to be the biggest threat. And John's got nothing to lose now. He's either going to go uh, absolutely mad and try and beat us all, or uh, he's just going to uh, enjoy the rest of his day. And he's got to think of his teammate Steve battling for third. Yeah, I don't know about that. There's not been any team orders for JR to win the championship, so I can't imagine it. But I think Reynolds will probably be enjoying this race now, having that title. Scott Smart ready to fire off the line, and that's a great start for Scott Smart. He's fighting for third in this championship, as is Kagiyama. Kagiyama on the left, right in behind Glenn Richards. So into the first corner, it's Kianari, followed by Michael Rutter. Scott Smart, Glenn Richards, Reynolds in there as well. Big squirm there from Kianari. But Kagiyama and Scott Smart with in striking distance of each other. Yeah, absolutely, and there goes Rutter through into second place, but Kianari nearly lost it out of Redgate corner, and Glenn Richards forceful down into the old hairpin with that Kawasaki. OK, down they go, up the rear section of the circuit now, and fighting back Glenn Richards on the Kawasaki in second position. So Honda Kawasaki, Honda Kawasaki, then Suzuki, that's your top five. Hooking into McLean's a hard part of the circuit, running up the hill now, and at the moment it's Liner Stern between the two men dicing it for third. Yeah, that's right. Scott Smart, number 88, in fourth position. Behind him, Kagiyama, 71. And if they stay in this position, Kagiyama will take that third place in the championship. But there's a long way yet to go with this race. So 23, Ryuchi Kianari leads this race. Glenn Rich is 75 in second. There's bike number three, Rata third. 88, Smart fourth. And then Kagiyama in behind. So for Scott Smart to whittle away that lead that Kagiyama's got, he needs to get past Rata. He needs to get past his teammate. And preferably, he needs to John Reynolds again in front of Kagiyama as well. Oh. It's busy down the bottom of the coop. What about number 17 there, James Ellison, the privateer. He's just charged past about three people down into that Melbourne loop on the Gentine R1 Yamaha. Back across the stripe again. And have a look at this, Steve. This is the second lap. And Kianari's actually in a different time zone. Absolutely. 23. Ryuchi Kianari has really got the HM plant on the working for him. We spoke about it earlier. He had a real poor mid part of the season, but he is back at the moment. Breaking lap records, really. Those times that he's setting are stunning. Oh, no! That's Richards down. Down through the crane of curves. I hope he's all right. He's only just back from injury. 
Yeah, up and OK, and that's a real weird one. Look at the front end fold. You saw that front just tipping smoke off the front tyre there. That was a peculiar incident there for Glenn Richards. It was actually through Hollywood there, even before he got to the craners. Yeah, I don't know what went on there, because normally it's the back of the bike that's sliding through there, and it just folded that front end. Neil Tuxworth keeping an eye on his two boys out there, first and second by a long way. There goes James Ellison oh, going no. through. Oh, no, Scott Smart. Scott Smart, that's the end of the battle for third. Scott Smart is touring. What's happened? Well, this is what happened. Scott Smart earlier on went off the track, and he's got dirt and gravel and everything and look, in there his there goes Kagiyama through. Absolutely, so that's the end of that battle for third place. So Smart was out there trying to clean up his tyres, having run through the gravel track. And have a look at that. Kianari might be going very hard, but Rutter, a new lap record, chasing his teammate. And the battle for third on the track, and it is Kagiyama, 71, crosses the line with Sean Emmett on the Monster Mob Machine right behind him. And look at that, John Reynolds, the new champion, he's also homing in. He can just enjoy the view, follow them round through Redgate again. Emmett looks as though he's attacking round Hollywood down towards the Craner Curve. This is working very well for Kagiyama as we sit. He is going to finish third in the championship. Brilliant for the Monster Mob team, though, because through at the hardest part of the circuit to pass. Old hairpin, Emmett slides inside. Absolutely, confidence there of Sean Emmett down into the old hairpin. He's pushing hard on that front end and it turns nicely. Kagiyama has nowhere to go. Sean Emmett goes through into third. But all that Kagiyama needs to worry about, Steve, is to make sure he finishes in front of Scott Smart. Yeah, he's in a kind of same deal as a, John Reynolds was in race one. Just bring that bike home nice and safe, but he's down the inside and goes through back into third place. The Japanese rider, Yukio Kagiyama, is pushing that Rizla Suzuki. He has a look over his shoulder. He's not listening to you, I tell you, he's not. Up they never do. <laughs> they never do. Up there we go again, into Goddard's. Beating on the power now as they head down the straight. Here's this guy, Steve. Yeah, well, this is just a real good outbreaking manoeuvre from the Japanese rider, Kagiyama, down there. Block pass, really. Puts his bike just where Emmett wants to be. Nothing Emmett could do about it. Round the high, fast part of the circuit now. Up the hill, we hook right and onto the back straight. John Reynolds just keeping a watching brief behind. Scott Smart is not anywhere in sight at the moment. Is it too late for him? Nothing wrong with the handling of that Ducati through Coppice there. And look in the background, Kawasaki's on the horizon. That's right, number 88, Scott Smart got those tyres cleaned up and he is homing in on this battle for third place. John Reynolds also joining the party. He wants to help out his teammate Kagiyama. I'll tell you what, old Smart's going to have to go someone at Kawasaki to catch these guys as we look at Emmett once again just stuffing the bike right in front of Kagiyama in the Melbourne loop. The drag back up the hill again, can he make a tick? Did you notice Kagiyama looking over his shoulder there? Where's Smart? Yeah, and he was happy to see John Reynolds right there behind him playing shotgun at the moment. But you can see the Ducati and Emmett is riding extremely well. The Suzuki's really seem to have the squirt down the straight. You watch them just closing in on this short straight. Then up into fifth gear, down into Redgate. Second gear corner as they come through here. And out of this corner, you'll see the rear end sliding around. There's the Crescent Suzuki team watching what's going on. Still plenty of tension for Paul Denning, the boss there. Hey, look, coming down the hill. There's Scott Smart. Boy, he's knocked some chunks out of that lead that Kagiyama had. He's got to get past Reynolds first. Reynolds needs to ride Slayer. Yeah, I think he does, but Scott Smart's done a terrific job there. He's really been putting in some incredibly fast laps on that ZX-10 Kawasaki. He really has no chance, frankly, though. He's got to pass John, and then he's got to pass Kagiyama and get up to the front if he's going to take that final position on the podium for the championship. Yeah, but Scott Smart does not know how to give up as he takes the very risky line round the outside of Coppers. He can easily get run out of track there. Back down, oh, on the back wheel for Kagiyama over the bump there on the back straight. Straight, and Scott Smart just holding station. Wow, Kagiyama made a mistake. Yeah, then maybe that's what Scott Smart's after, pushing him into a big mistake. We saw him go on the grass in race one, but Kagiyama went very, very wide there. John Reynolds down the inside this time, number two. Smart round the outside. They're almost tripping over each other there. Well, this is good news for Smart now. Look at that, Kagiyama starting to make a few mistakes. There's cracks there in the paintwork, there's no doubt about it. Oh, this championship goes right down to the last lap of the last race, and still things are being decided. You've got to hand it to Scott Smart, he doesn't know when to quit. Well, he'd love to take that fourth spot there, because this is what the battle's for. John Reynolds in fourth, Smart fifth, Kagiyama in sixth position. Had he not have made that mistake, could have been a different story.
Round they go for the last time, down the hill as it sits. Kagiyama will finish third in the championship, and that will be an astonishing result for the Crescent team. Now Reynolds just lets him slip through. I'm not sure if he let him slip through, Charlie, or whether that was just forceful riding from number 88, Scott Smart, because look at that. Reynolds dropped back, letting Kagiyama go through, because Reynolds is realising this is still the battle for third place, but I think Kagiyama can sleep with ease. Yeah, I think he can. He doesn't want to sleep yet, got half a left to go, but just to be sure, JR throws him that extra couple of points by letting him through. As we sit here, as Kianari comes down, you can see the lead he's got. He's coming down into the Melbourne loop. He's on a different postcode from the rest of the team. There's no doubt he is in stunning form, having set lap records here today. A double win for the Japanese rider, Ryuchi Kianari. And that's what we like to see. Lots of slide, riding as he did at the start of the year. It really works for him. Ryo Kio takes the double. Putting a lap on a privateer as he does it, but meantime, back at the Melbourne Loop, these guys are still at it. Yeah, Scott Smart hasn't given up yet, but it was Rutter that got second, Emmett third, this is the battle for fourth. There is Emmett going round into Goddard's corner, and Scott Smart's going to take fourth, but there's no doubt the man behind him is going to take third in the championship. Across on the back wheel for Sean Emmett, gets a podium for the... Injury and all the trouble you had, you must be very happy. Yeah, this year's a many... Many happening and uh, many experience and uh, many many stories. Then, yeah, good season this year. Uh, I have many some problems this year beginning season, but uh, my results as a team staff is uh, many good help for me. And thank you very much. And uh, I getting power from English fans. Well, we said way back at the opening round at Silverstone, this championship was going to go all the way, and that's exactly what's happened. It was decided today at Donington. John Reynolds is the 2004 Think British Superbike champion. What a fantastic season it's been. We <laughs>